Ladies and gentlemen, the February 12th Buncombe County Board of Adjustment meeting is now called to order. If we can begin uh, with any announcements from staff. No, sir, from the planning department. All right. <coughs> can we begin with introductions then? That's right. Uh, my name is Joshua Freeman. I'm uh, with the planning department. Haley Mathis, planning. Shannon Capazelli, planning. Brandon Freeman, Buncombe County Legal Department. Robbie Taylor. Dot Cordell. Martin Moore. George Lycan. Keith Levi. Tom Christ. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Have we all had a minute to review the minutes from our last session? Both, uh, both minutes are still under review. They have not been sent out yet. They are... It's like people were paying attention or something. Yeah, so they, they're, they are stuck on my desk right now. Fair enough. Does anyone object to us <clears throat> hearing that next session when the minutes are complete? No. no. All right. Next, any disclosures or conflicts that need to be made prior to hearing any applications? I understand we have one. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, in regards to ZPH 2020-0, um, 002 Overlook Pud. Uh, my employer, Biltmore Farms, is an adjacent property owner um, to the proposed development. So uh, I will be. I uh, would like to request to recuse myself. We do not have any direct involvement in this development, but uh, we are directly adjacent to this development. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Levi? I make a motion that we recuse Mr. Levi. I have a motion and a second. All in favor of allowing recusal? Aye. Any opposed? All right. That is so permitted. Thank you for that disclosure. Thank you. Are there any other housekeeping matters before we get rolling here? All right. Seeing none, I'd like to welcome everyone. Uh, to the Buncombe County Board of Adjustment hearing for the month of February. Um, for those of you who have been here before, please forgive the repetitiveness, but this is a quasi-judicial evidentiary hearing. That means similar to a courtroom, state and local law set specific procedures and rules concerning how the board must make its decisions. Our discretion is limited. We must base our decision on the competent, relevant, and substantial evidence in the record. Our decisions must be constrained by the standards in the zoning ordinance and based on the facts presented. If you'll be speaking as a witness today, please focus on the facts and standards, not personal preference and opinion. For example, matters of personal knowledge and specific facts about a, a project in question are acceptable and potentially permissible. However, opinion and speculation as to traffic, impact on the community, crime, things along those lines would not be, absent being an expert. We value a transparent process and encourage the community to remain engaged and participate, but given this is a hearing on the record, there are certain topics and areas that limit the type of testimony we can receive. <coughs> experts will be allowed to offer opinion testimony. Those experts have to be properly qualified and tendered to the board and a determination made prior to them offering the, their opinion. Again, as a reminder, all witnesses should solely provide factual testimony as to how the project does or does not meet the standards. I understand we have a very helpful board outside that kind of walks through the process, and I would encourage anyone who's um, not familiar with the standards to take a look at that prior to speaking before the board just so we can uh, spare ourselves any interruptions here. Um, with that in mind, if staff doesn't mind introducing the first project. State your name. Shannon Capazelli. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Oh, state your name. Joshua Freeman. Raise your hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the presentation of ZPH 2019-00053. <coughs> it is the Laurelwood uh, conditional use permit application. Gene Sandlin and Tim Fleissauer of WEI Investments have applied for a conditional use permit pursuant to the Zoning Ordinance of Buncombe County, Section 78641A and 678B6, Conditional Use Standards. This is to establish a planned unit development, Level 1, for single-family townhomes at 15 Wait Still Drive and at 20, 221 and 215 Ledbetter Road. 
Uh, I certify that this public hearing was properly noticed and all applicable parties were notified of the meeting in accordance with general statutes and Buncombe County Code. I ask that the uh, applicant and staff materials be accepted into the record as evidence. Thank you very much. Any questions for staff? <coughs> in our discussion, we'll admit the testimony and evidence and application presented and recommendations presented by staff. Thank you. If we can have the applicant step up and be sworn in. Um, state your name. Gary Davis. Raise your right hand. Do you swear our firms to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Are you, um, all right. Uh, state your name. Gene Stamplin. Raise your right hand. Do you swear our firms to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? And Mr. Chair, I can provide a summary if you'd like. Yes, please. Okay. So the project uh, is for 29 townhome lots surrounded by common open space with a loop road exiting onto Ledbetter Road at two points. The total acreage of the site is 5.63 acres. The parcel is zoned R1 and does not contain any areas in an overlay district. The project is to be served by public water and sewer. MSD sewer and City of Asheville water allocation approval letters have already been received. Uh, conceptual stormwater and erosion control plans have been approved by our staff. A driveway permit has been issued by DOT, though we have not yet received a copy of that. Uh, fire marshal approval has been received and a traffic impact letter has pr been provided by the applicant, though I'll note that a traffic study is not a requirement for the project of this size. Uh, a major subdivision application was required as well, and it was approved by the planning board at their January 27th meeting. Um, in your packets, you have received um, the original site plan. There had been some revisions, so you'll see there's a copy of a, an additional site plan pages that say revised on them. Um, the project appears to be in compliance with the conditional use permit standards with the exception of the minimum 20 feet distance between buildings, which is a requirement of the PUD application. Uh, but the board has the ability to approve the reduced distances between the buildings, uh, some of which are as small as 11 feet between structures. And this approval can occur as part of your CUP review. It does not have to have a separate variance application. And regardless of the board's decision, the applicant will still be required to meet all applicable building and fire safety code requirements during the permitting process. Um, so staff recommendations, if you were to approve the application, would include uh, the provision of a copy of the NCDOT driveway permit, obtaining E911 addresses, obtaining final stormwater and erosion control permits, and providing proof of approval of City of Asheville water and MSD sewer lines. Thank you. Any questions about staff's recommendations or comments or suggestions? Seeing none, we'll accept the summary and review the conditions upon hearing the application. Please. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Gary Davis with Davis Civil Solutions. We're the civil engineers for the project. Uh, forgive me if I duplicate some of the things that Shannon already said, but I'll try to be brief with them. The project, again, is located on Ledbetter Road adjacent to Waitsville Drive and Waitsville Subdivision on approximately five and a half acres, of which about four acres is being disturbed. Uh, the project consists of the construction of approximately 29 townhomes arranged in a uh, row house configuration of singles, doubles, triples, and quads. Uh, the existing site is an open site, uh, generally exposed dirt, uh, very little vegetation except next to the road. Uh, the roadway that we're putting through the site it takes advantage of two existing driveways uh, along Ledbetter Road now that no additional driveways will be added. The road loops through for emergency vehicles access uh, without a dead end. Uh, the upper portion of the project, again, is generally undisturbed as that is a Progress Energy right-of-way, which is a pretty significantly wide right-of-way. We have two retaining wall locations at the top. One is only five feet high and the other is two feet high. And that's to, in order to just terrace the slope to keep it from being so steep. Uh, 
parking is provided with garages and driveways. Some driveways are a little bit longer to accommodate more cars. There will be an extra additional parking lot down at the lower left hand that would be on, uh, on the drawing, lower left hand site for overflow parking and visitors and so forth. Uh, water and sewer again is accessed along Ledbetter Road, no major extensions but direct connection at Ledbetter. Uh, storm drainage control is with underground, no above ground ponds. It's all underground in the two lower sections of the project. Uh, the, the development will have its own homeowner association, but will be subsidiary to the Wayne's Waitstall uh, Homeowner Association as their partners in the, in the project. A uh, community meeting was held last week, of which uh, I forget 10, 12, 15 people were there that mainly, mainly they were interested in what the look of the project was, the price of the units, and so forth. Just general questions. It was a very successful meeting. Uh, I have Gene Sandland and Tim Fleshauer here, the owners of the project. If you have any additional questions, if you have any technical questions, then I'll entertain those at this time. Thank you. Are there any board questions for the applicant? Yes, I have one question. Um, the ownership of the subject property was indicated in the application that the third parcel was uh, not currently owned or under contract and that was going to be uh, taken care of. Has that been? Yes. Uh, we have a, an agreement with that owner. Um, um, essentially, we have, we have a contract in place where we'll probably adjust that contract uh, to uh, transfer the deed at the appropriate time. But, but yes, we have, a, we have an agreement in place. <coughs> Any other board questions at this time? What are the size of the buildings? Just square footage. Uh, square footage wise, uh, the, they're generally three floor plans uh, starting at about 1,200 square feet. Uh, we have another floor plan that's 1,400 and then we have a, a larger floor plan that would be about 1,900 square feet. Um, we may add a fourth um, uh, with an upper story. but. I might add that we're building these on the slope, as you can see by the, by the site plan there. We're having to go up away from Ledbetter Road. So uh, some of the units are a little bit closer than the others. Some are exceed the, the minimum, and that's to accommodate the, the slope so we don't have part of the, the upper part of the building below the road and the lower part of the building above the road. <laughs> so that's the, that's the reason for the... We're trying to minimize the slope on the driveways. So on you, all of, so all of them will be about 11 feet. No, apart. no, just just generally those on the steeper section of the roadway. The roadway is about 10 percent in the steepest section as it goes up, then it levels off to about one percent at the top as it loops around, then comes down again at 10. Those that are along the adjacent to the steeper part of the road are a little bit closer just because of the, you know, trying to build a level building on a slope, <laughs> on a slope road in front. So there's the lots 11 and 12 would be close are the one, are those the ones on the slope? Uh, generally, those, generally those on the slope, if you look in the upper right-hand corner, those spread out quite a bit. They're further away from the road, and those in the lower right-hand are set back from the road a lot further, too. Just we had to accommodate somewhere to put the stormwater detention, so those are set further apart, too. Seeing none, do you have any additional witnesses you'd like to call at this time? You do not have to. Okay. I don't think so. Thank you. Is there anyone here from the public that would like to be heard as to this project? You don't mind stepping up, sir. Mr. Chair, <coughs> I'd like to take a moment to do a little research. Could we have a brief recess of about five minutes? Five minutes. Any objection from the board? Fair with us, sir. Five minute recess. Hard five minutes, everyone. I know. I, I, I can remember. 
remember when those first, when all those first were. Uh, I have friends that actually live in one of the subdivisions right on. I mean, no way say Josh What's that? Josh So it's 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 back to back there is the issue I mean, or not the issue but that's where I want to go. File on the computer. How's it going? If I can ever have everyone take a seat, we're going to commence again. All right. My understanding is the county attorney has some questions for the applicant prior to allowing the witness to speak. 
Briefly, Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, sirs, and either one of you can answer this question for me. This is just questions regarding ownership. Uh, can you tell me the names of the different property owners for these three parcels involved in this uh, project? Um, yes, uh, uh, Kevin Way or, uh, owns the two primary parcels there, the large piece, and then the, uh, I think it's 221 Ledbetter is the address. And does he own that as Way Investments LP? Exactly, yes. Okay. Um, and then uh, Sandy, um, Knopp uh, is the other, uh, it's the piece adjacent to um, the 221 Ledbetter piece. And she owns that as a sole property owner? She does, yes. Exactly. And which property is under contract for you to buy? <coughs> All three of them. All three of them? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Any other property owners involved at all? No, there, there is a sliver um, uh, that the Waitstill uh, HOA owns um, behind the pump house. On your survey, um, on rather on our plat uh, that we've submitted, uh, it does reflect that, and that would be a part part of the transfer as well. Yeah. And that's 15 Waitstill Drive. Is that correct? Uh, no, that's the big piece. That's the, the big piece. Yeah, 15 Waitstill is the address uh, of the big piece. Yeah. The sliver is mentioned. On, what I'm looking at is this: uh, the applicant owner. Uh, affidavit for a property and there are four pieces of property listed that was one of my questions so one of those is a small sliver very small sliver you um, might recognize it if you heard it 221 Ledbetter 215 Ledbetter or 59 Stonehouse Road it must be Stonehouse yeah Stonehouse yeah, Road yeah. okay and do you currently own 59 Stonehouse Drive the applicant does no that's wait still HOA uh, yeah we have a representative here of Whitesville HOA if you need to speak with them. Is Whitesville OAA, uh, I'm sorry, HOA part of this application? No. I apologize, the uh, signature from Waste Soul POA was on a second page that I did not know about. Okay, oh, uh, owner affidavit, was that? Okay, gotcha. Mr. County Attorney, let me ask you, would, would there be any objection to hearing from the member of the public prior to going any further with the inquiry, or should we hold off on, until we do our due, due diligence here? I think that would absolutely be okay, and I and I think those are all my questions, and unless they interested, unless any board members have questions. Does any of the board have questions as to the proper parties that need to be joined for this matter? No. Okay. It, uh, and just for the board's benefit, it, it appears that everything is in order as far as all of the property owners have signed a property owner affidavit. I just didn't have it in front of me. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right, if we can have the member from the community who volunteered to speak, step back up. Good morning. Um, state your name. David Carroll. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. I'm a resident of Arabella Heights. My home is 3,000 square feet on 0.87s of an acre. I had just found out about this two weeks ago. I did not get any postcards, which I was informed yesterday. I should have gotten a po postcard since I'm such close knit to this development. I did go over and take pictures yesterday. We're gonna additional at least 60 more cars pulling out of our area, which we have a hard time now just getting out of 
Arabella Heights because of the curve and the driveways of these two homes that are already there that these developers are going to use are on a curve. The renderings they're giving are individual, so that's a bad impression because they're good, it's actually considered cluster homes, which is not good for the area. It's actually zoned single family home. So I'm totally, I, like I went to Beverly Hanks yesterday in Biltmore Park and the people there told me the only thing that's good out of this development. Sir, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you not to offer any hearsay testimony. If those people aren't here, they okay. can't have that testimony admitted okay. right now. Well, the only thing that I feel that would be get the benefit out of this development is to get rid of the mobile home and the clay background, which would block it. But other than that, I'm totally against this development. Thank you. Any board questions for that witness or? the applicant based on that information? I guess I have a question just in general. Is there already a mobile home on site? Yes. Um, yeah. one, of the property, uh, one of the properties in question, uh, Sandy Knupp, uh, that is her mobile home, and she is a part of this. Uh, she's one of the owner affidavits that was signed. And will that remain? It will not, no. Uh, that is hers. She is freely, we've, you know, it's a free transfer, uh, freely agreed to that transfer as well. Uh, yep. Thank you. Does the applicant have any questions for the witness that just spoke? <coughs> we, had, we held an HOA uh, informational meeting um, last week, and um, I didn't see that witness at that informational meeting, and that probably would have been a more appropriate time to address uh, some of the concerns and information specifically specific well, well right now I'd, I'd just request for procedure's sake if you have any questions now would be the appropriate time but any commentary about what he should or should not have done would not be appropriate here yeah I was at my beach house in Florida so I wasn't able to come to it I did try and post if you can come back up to the microphone so I can hear you but I, I really don't want to get into a discussion about right. where you were that, that's not pertinent right. to but I did try and post about this hearing on our um, website for the uh, Homeowners Association, but it was blocked just to inform people to come here. But I was not able to go to that meeting. So. Thank you. Uh, the question about um, sight lines um, uh, upon entering or exiting, I guess, uh, the community. Um, that was brought up, brought up at the informational meeting, and you know, we're completely open to addressing those. Uh, I've, my idea was, if needed, we could add a um, uh, what's, I don't know the technical name, but a, a mirror essentially um, across the road uh, to aid in you know in people uh, exiting. Um, um. I think this also to be taken up by DOT when they approve the driveways. All right. Going forward, just so everyone knows, because the applicant is a party in interest, just like a courtroom, they have the right to ask questions. Um, that being said, in the interest of following a fair procedure here, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to be very, very cautious about allowing anybody to offer argumentation or summaries going forward. Um, this is kind of a cross-examination period only. If you have questions, and then um, the applicant, of course, will get a chance to close argument um, and offer any final argumentation or conclusions or summaries that they'd like to. Um, do we have another member from the public that would like to speak? Richard Wolfkill. I live on Sorry, Oaktown sir. Uh, state your name again. Richard Wolfkill. Uh, raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Sure do. Thank you. My wife says, 65 years, we can't drive out our driveway with all those that bit of road. And that's my basic problem. If you're familiar with it, I don't know about the person being. I'm right above the property. I didn't hear nothing about other me. But to, I've been here seven years. It's a great property, great place to live. We're close to everything. But try to drive out and let a road now on that curve. 
almost impossible most times. To my right, I can see about 100 foot. That's about all. And people come around here 35 miles an hour, and I have to sometimes dodge the left side. Side. My left side, I've got a blocker so I can see it. But there's no, as far as I know this, they're all single homes in that whole area for two or three miles. To create that many homes in a short area will create more problems. That's all I can say. I'm opposed to it. Thank you. Does the applicant have any questions for this witness before he sits down? No. Thank you, sir. Sir. Could you, could you spell your last name for us? W-O-L-F-C-A-L-E. Is there anyone else from the community that would like to speak for or against the project? Yes, sir. <coughs> you can state your name, then we'll swear you in. Uh, state your name. Carol Coleman. Uh, raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thanks. Uh, I'm the president of the HOA of Waystill Mountain and have been on that board since we uh, began the board in 2010. Waystill Mountain entails about five different communities, Arabella, Legacy Cove, Stonecrest, Stonecrest Villas, and Ledbetter Farm. Within the, uh, when the developer was drawing all this up, this was part of his, deve his de uh, development, was to take this, this parcel of land and, and put in town townhomes and such. Um, Gene and Tim have met we met with us at the very beginning back in uh, September and, and October, uh, explained to us what they would li like to do with the property. The property's been sitting there barren for as long as I've lived there since 2007. Um, and what they propose and what they've shown us, which would be under the ARC guide, guidelines of our HOA, looks very nice and also will enhance our, our community. Uh, currently in our community, of the HOA. We have homes that would range anywhere from about 250 to all the way up to about 850. So it's a broad, broad range of homes. It's not just one segment of homes. So it gives a person, such as myself, I live in a, in a 3,500 square foot home. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm about done with that, that house. But you know what? I love where I live. I love the lo location. My plans are to talk to them about buying a townhome so I can stay in that, in that community. I love Waystill Mountain. Uh, we have a great community. We have great neighbors. Um, can't say enough good about it. So for that, that point, I think, it's a, I think it's great for the, for the community and great for the HOA and great for that, that side of Asheville. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does the applicant have any questions for this witness? No. Are there any other members of the public here to speak for or against this project? All right, seeing none, we'll go ahead and offer the applicant a chance to offer closing summarizing arguments if they care to. If not, we'll close the public phase of the hearing. No, thank you very much. Thank you. At this time, we'll close the public phase of the hearing. I'd invite any board statements, <coughs> questions, or input. Oh, I like it. All good. Yeah, all good. In that case, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, based on the evidence presented to this board, including the following exhibits, the petitioner's application, the submitted development plans, the GIS maps, the staff report, the findings of fact worksheet, and testimony presented to this hearing, I move that the board adopt the following findings of fact. One through six and seven A inclusive. How about the eleven feet? We need to add that. <clears throat> it's part of the plan. Second. I have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Those findings of fact are so adopted. Mr. Chairman, based upon the foregoing findings of fact and for the reasons set forth therein, I move that a requested conditional use permit be approved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Now, let me ask, just for clarity's sake, so I understand this. This was with or without the recommendations offered by staff, just outright? 
With the recommendations. With the recommendations of the best staff. Okay. Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Your project is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. This time, as people are headed out, could we have staff introduce the next project? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, so your next application is uh, ZPH 2019-60, uh, Fairview Meadows Planned Unit Development. Um, the subject property is located at 234 and 36 Reeds Creek Road. Uh, the current owner is Fairview Holdings uh, 1 or I, LLC. Uh, the applicant is the same, represented by Mr. Warren Sugg from Civil Design Concepts. Uh, the total acreage of the property is 11.6 acres. Uh, the project area would be 9.87 acres. Currently zoned uh, CS Commercial Services. Um, no floodplains, watersheds, or any sensitive natural areas uh, that are regulated by the county on the site. Uh, the applicant does propose a total of 42 single family townhome units. Um, the uh, as generally shown on the, as shown on the site plan above, um, the application does meet all of our technical standards for uh, conditional use permit and for a planned unit development. With the exception of similar to the previous project, the units will be closer than 20 feet together. Um, the, again, the board can approve that as part of this process. Uh, we did have a conversation with the building inspector, and, and if if the buildings are closer than 20 feet, they'll have to be constructed with the appropriate fire rated walls and wall materials. Um, otherwise, the applicant does meet, the application does meet all of your uh, requirements and conditions. Um, I will draw your attention to uh, suggested, suggested conditions uh, by staff on page six. Um, there is a motion worksheet in your packet. Um, I will say that this, excuse me, public hearing was advertised in accordance with North Carolina General Statutes. Buckham County Code, and I'd ask that the staff and applicants' materials be accepted into the record as evidence. Be happy to take any questions. Any questions for staff? Thank you very much. Is the applicant present? And for the record, we will accept and admit the recommendations offered by Mr. Freeman. Um, oh, sorry. State your name. Warren Sugg. Graze your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, board, and thank you, staff, for your assistance to this point on uh, hearing our case and helping us through the process. Um, I know you guys have a very full agenda, so I'll make my presentation uh, very short and to the point. Um, I'm Warren Sugg with Civil Design Concepts. I'm a civil engineer. Uh, we're a locally based uh, Asheville firm and been before you uh, several times. I'm also joined by uh, owners of the property, Billy Taylor and uh, J.Q. Freeman. Uh, as mentioned in the intro, um, it is a 10 acre uh, parcel. It is very open in its current use. Uh, CS by zoning, so commercial, uh, services commercial services has a number of different uses that could happen within it um, this piece of land has been held uh, since 2013 in that time it's been reviewed and looked at for things such as uh, commercial uh, commercial grocery uh, grocery at this time is is not uh, taken off we've even seen in the in recent news that groceries are starting to close in some places and some groceries are taken off uh, we've also looked at it and considered multifamily. Uh, the site is uh, about nine acres of project area, so or almost close to 10 actually. We have the ability to go up to 118 units, and we had considered doing some multifamily uh, 
apartments here, we would be before you for that as well, but the density is, is there. But in just looking at the wide range of different uses and uh, compatibility with surrounding uh, neighborhoods, we just felt like a 42 unit plan unit development would be uh, in keeping. Uh, today, you've got 42 units that are in front of you, plan unit development across 10 acres. These are two story uh, units, single family in nature. Uh, access will be off of Reeds Creek. We already have an NCDOT permit in hand for that access, so it's already been through their driveway permit process. Uh, we already have water and sewer allocations in hand from uh, City of Asheville and from MSD. Also, uh, we've been through the preliminary Buncombe County staff preliminary reviews of uh, things such as uh, fire access, uh, stormwater, roach control for, for us to come before this board. Uh, my client has met with the uh, Homeowners Association of the Southcliff neighborhood and has uh, discussed the project and um, they, they may be here and may uh, talk to us, uh, but we are uh, we're just here to discuss anything you have about the project and uh, that concludes my, my presentation. Thank you. Any board questions for the applicant? I have a question. Is this uh, going to be individual lots or will the um, property be under single management? Individual lots. So these will be parceled off and sold? Yes. So uh, question for staff, this was noted as a townhome development. How is this uh, characterized as townhome rather than single family residential? Uh, my understanding is that the, uh, you me if I'm wrong, uh, Mr. Sugg, that the building footprints themselves will become the parcels. So more of a zero lot line, the buildings will define the footprint of the parcel, the rest will be open common area, does that make sense? I, don't, I, I wouldn't necessarily characterize it as, as townhomes in the sense that the, the building walls are not adjoined, but it'll be single family residential on a <laughs> building footprint. So is the common space, is that commonly maintained or is that the individual and is his characterization correct? Uh, these are not townhomes, these are single family dwellings and the common space would be held in HOA. Is the common space all of the surrounding property apart from the house footprint or just that labeled as common space? The common spaces would be those outside the property lines. Um, I don't know that we will have a zero, uh, zero lot or lot just under the house itself. I think we'll have lots in between uh, the units themselves. So I get the, the point of my questioning on this is, is about the setbacks on those, and I think it's a, um, it helps me understand the justification for the setbacks as to what these, this will look like if these are going to be individual houses that have individual properties that individuals own that have 10 feet between buildings, or if these are going to be more what I would characterize as townhomes where all of the property outside the building footprint is owned commonly and maintained commonly. So any clarity you can give on that would be good. So the intention is to have uh, lot lines between the units. So there would be common spaces that would be outside of that, but there would be an intention to have lots, uh, lot lines between. Okay, thanks. Uh, Mr. Sugg, could you, so just clarify for the record, do you, what would the setbacks be for the buildings within their parcels? Would it essentially be zero setback in terms of Correct. Regular, go ahead. Yes. Okay. Any board questions, staff questions, concerns? Thank you. Is there anyone from the public here to speak for or against this project? Yes, sir. <clears throat> State your name. Fred Littleton. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. I have a question for Mr. Sugg regarding the, the schematic up there. Um, 
it is not topographical. Uh, I live in the neighborhood just probably less than 50 yards to the northeast there, or nor yeah, the northeast. Um, there's a, a significant slope back there. Um, what proposals do you have for maintaining the border and not disturbing that slope? And I, I realize there are steep slope regulations, but I'm not sure they apply in this case. Please feel free to answer. Okay, so um, I'm not sure exactly which parcel you are, but we have a, a slope that we would be maintaining and developing on the north edge of our parcel. Right. And um, there is currently a 30-foot minimum and greater piece of land that's owned by the HOA uh, association that's north of our property before you even get to uh, parcels. And uh, that is currently uh, sewer goes through there as well as it's uh, just not, uh, not part of our project. So we would have nothing to do with any disturbance within that because that would be off of, off of our property. There's approximately uh, 100 feet between our property line and the, the closest uh, structure to the north of us, um, and we would have no impact on, on those lands as well. Um, as stated, we don't have any kind of steep slope or, or hilltop um, requirements here. I'll also say that the houses to the north of us are generally 30 to 50 feet higher in elevation than where our development uh, would begin. Do you have any additional? I do. Uh, the rendering there shows that the access to the development is off Reeds Creek. Uh, will construction access also be off Reeds Creek or will it use South Cliff Parkway? All access will be off of Reeds Creek. For construction as well? Yes. Thank you. And do you have any, I guess it isn't part of the proposal, but the parcel which is immediately to the northeast, excuse me, the northwest of these, uh, there's two parcels in there as to whether they're going to be part of this eventually or be, could be commercial. Talking about across the stream? Uh, yes, if you, you're looking at the development, you go up to the northwest. Those are not part of our development. Uh, we're subdividing from uh, those lands. Okay. Any additional questions? No, thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public here to speak for or against this project? Yes, sir. <coughs> thank you. Uh, my name is Michael Robinson. I live in South Cliff. Uh, raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. And your name is Michael Robinson. Yeah, I'm the president of the HOA at South Cliff, and I really am not here to, to speak against this development. Um, there are aspects of it that are actually very appealing to us as a potential use for that property. 42 single family homes would be a lot more appealing to most of our residents, I think, than multifamily dwellings or a, a commercial operation would be. Um, I do have a question, though, for the county, and that you, you mentioned that there were conditions that were being placed on the record. I just was asking if you could clarify what those are so we at least know what is expected of the applicant. Yes, sir. And let me clarify. These are, these are conditions that staff is um, recommending that the board incorporate into their decision if they choose to adopt, if they choose to approve the project. And I'll just read these out loud. Make sure I have the right piece of paper here. Okay. Uh, that the applicant will ensure um, adequate site distance on both approaches to the driveway. Uh, meeting minimum uh, standards of the manual on uniform traffic control devices. Uh, the applicant will provide a paved turnout for, for the access point. Uh, they'll provide <coughs> documentation that NCDOT has issued a driveway permit and is satisfied with the um, construction of the driveway access point uh, prior to final approval of any structures, uh, that the applicant will obtain appropriate um, emergency 911 addresses and that the applicant will obtain stormwater and erosion control per permits prior to construction. Thanks very much. Yes, sir. No Do you have any sir. questions for this witness? Yes, sir. Is there anyone else from the public that would like to be heard at this time? And seeing none, I'll offer Mr. Sugg the opportunity to make a closing statement if you care to. If not, we'll close the public phase of the hearing. Um, no further comment. 
With that, we'll close the public phase of the hearing. Any board input, statements, or questions? Um, I'm I'm generally supportive of this, although um, I, I am concerned about the the setbacks. Um, I think the our ordinances are. I, I appreciate that we have the ability to look at this within the PUD application as opposed to a, as a separate variance. And <clears throat> I think my general understanding is that this is if there are, that that we entertain these if there's site constraints with topography or use of the property or if there's an attempt at, at clustering the development and I don't see anything in here that that to me meets those con conditions um, and it, it seems to me that that's primarily a workaround for the minimum lot standards and this and the setback requirements for this development and I would be more comfortable supporting this if the setbacks and the lot sizes uh, conform to what the ordinances or it did and if there weren't that there was more of a justifiable reason for um, this this alteration so um, I don't think as, as it is right now although again I'm generally supportive of this development and I don't think it's a, a, a bad use of the property I would prefer to see it conform to the <coughs> setback and, and lot size requirements unless there was some other design on the project for that it was more like the previous development that it's townhomes and under common maintenance And I do think that that's a valid concern in the spirit of, of us not turning into kind of a rubber stamping board whenever someone doesn't pick a different option. It, it certainly could be an issue, we have, especially given the uptick in applications that we've had. I think it's some, something to be cognizant of. The ordinance is not meant to be particularly malleable, um, as I understand it. And I'd invite other perspectives on that. But I don't really understand why the setbacks are so close. I mean, I, don't, I guess I'm missing something. I don't know, understand the reason behind it. I'm not in real estate. I don't, maybe I, I'm not, if it's not a huge slope or there's not another reason, I'm not really sure why there's, why we're not conforming to those setbacks. May I add some more commentary? Please. So on a lot, on a, on a development such as this where you're trying to uh, have some continuity between lots and you, we are dealing with some topo. There is quite a bit of topo that goes from the north to the south, and it actually does um, go from, it splits and goes east and west as well. We're trying to have lots that don't have um, high crawls, trying to have as much um, slab, slab grading as we can, trying to keep the access <coughs> to each of these houses as um, accessible as we can. Um, so there is a topographic uh, challenge there. Uh, there's also the ability, and I think we've heard that uh, the building <coughs> code can allow us to maybe do some firewalls between some of the houses to help with some of those um, setback concerns. Uh, but that is our that is our attention to have the um, <coughs> no no closer than ten foot apart. I support the use of the property. I think it will fit in much better than a lot of different homes, a lot of apartments, or even a commercial. Uh, I do support it. Any other board input, questions or concerns? All right, seeing none, I would invite a motion. Mr. Chair, based upon the evidence presented to this board, including the following exhibits, the petitioner's application, the submitted development plan, the GIS maps, the staff report, the findings of fact worksheet, and testimony presented at the hearing, I move that this board adopt the following findings of fact, one through six, seven A inclusive. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor of adopting these findings of fact as stated? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Mr. Chair, based upon the foregoing findings of fact and for the reasons set forth therein, I move that the requested conditional use permit be approved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. All right. That is so approved. Thank you. Thank you. 
If we could take a five minute recess. There's no cough. Sweet tea. Sweet tea and water. It's okay. They do have a remarkably high number of cords here, huh? Just one container. Yeah. Oh, wow. Just one. So oh. we're going to do this now. How was our enough? I obtain coffee immediately. <laughs> that is the request. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. That couldn't have gone George better, asked George. You shall receive. Thank you, George. That was not a setup at all. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. That was not a setup. Oh, boy. <laughs> some degree because you guys work hard on recommendations. It's not just from mm -hmm. accepting the application yeah. and then just saying, well, this is what they want, so we're going to give it to them. Because mm -hmm. I've, I've heard a healthy number of people come back and say staff did not approve mm -hmm. or support what I do. Um, so I've just got to think about the best way to balance that mm -hmm. legal side against the public perception. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, we can set up a meeting for that. Do Citizens sure. Academy. That's exactly what we need. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll just have you guys stand here and probably talk about what you want to do until <laughs> so they come so blazed over by the boredom of all. They can use my P card. No, no. Yeah, no. 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 That's against policy. Oh, okay. So, it's okay. Uh, this we don't have a way. We don't have a. We don't have a consent to back from our office. I mean, I could get like, I could, like uh, something. I could go do that after this. What's wrong with the copy we, pad back mm -hmm. here? We, we can't. Select. We can't use that area right tonight. So the only issue, the major issue today, was that we couldn't use that area. Okay, that's fine. Unfortunately, which is why we had to use it. You can't go. I could go. Do you want me to do that? I just was told not to leave this building. You were told not to leave the building. Yes. But you can't go. You can't. You don't have any. Card. You don't have a car.
No, but I mean, it almost seems like we don't we don't go with the rules. Yeah, I mean, it almost seems like every single thing we do, there's a rule that we say, okay, it's okay. You give me a ring. I mean, I don't know. Is it reasonable? Is that something that they can live with and that we could live with? Yeah. We'll I was part of the coffee problem as well because we <laughs> lost access to the, for the record. For the record. I want to be clear that I, it wasn't just my compatriots. See, there, what, don't you guys have the speed dial? Is that if you punch a speed dial button that gets coffee sent over by? Well, you'd think as much coffee as we buy from the city bakery, they would just kind of just say, I'm also in the heating oil business. Oh. Mm. And mm. gasoline business. So see. Say no more. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. We are back in session. At least until coffee gets here. That's right. Um, any housekeeping matters you need to address before introducing the next application? All right. Oh. Um, State your name. Savannah Gibson. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth or nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. So good morning, Mr. Chair and board members. It is still morning. Uh, I'm here to present ZPH 2020-00001. Let me begin by stating for the record that this public hearing was properly advertised in accordance with North Carolina General Statutes and Buckham County Code. I respectfully request that the staff report and applicant materials be accepted into the record as evidence. That is so admitted. So ZPH 2020-0001, Amy Morgan and Donald Stalkey, the property owners at 110 Watson Road, pin number 9653365641, are seeking approval for conditional use, conditional use permit for a day nursery and private kindergarten of more than eight <coughs> students. The project is to be served by public water and septic, Buncombe County Environmental Health Septic Permit approvals were received, as the, and the fire marshal has approved <coughs> access for the day nursery and private kindergarten. The parcel is zoned R3 and does not contain any areas in any overlay district. The site plan includes sufficient parking and drop-off areas, as well as buffering areas. The total acreage of the site is 0 .70 acres. Staff recommends the following conditions if you choose to approve this project. 
that the applicant either provide a copy of an approved NCDOT driveway permit or communication from NCDOT stating that one is not needed. The applicants are both here to answer any questions from the board. Thank you very much. We will so admit your summary and recommendations. Thank you for that. We can have the applicant step forward to be sworn in. Uh, state your name. Amy Morgan. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thanks. Uh, state your name. Don Stalky. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Please begin. Thank you. Thank you for your time this morning. Um, I, uh, my husband and I are the owners of your Montessori school. Um, I'm the director and I also teach at um, the school. We opened our school in 2017 and we have currently have a zero to three program that serves children 15 months to age three and that is the program where I work. That's at a different location. And since opening the school, we've always looked for a, a spot where we can either have the um, toddler program and a three to six classroom or separate campuses. Um, and we've never been able to find a property that, that works. So last year we decided that our home would be a good spot for the three to six class. So we would have two separate locations. Um, this past summer we moved out of our home and moved less than a mile away. Um, and so we are seeking for um, the property to be zoned for up to 30 students. We would have a self-imposed cap of 24 students um, because of the size of the building itself. Um, and uh, we, since we own the property, we really care about the property and our neighbors and um, want to also have that cap size low so that there is little impact um, and it's a low student to teacher ratio as well, which we like um, in the Montessori world. Um, okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Are there any board questions for the applicants? There was a statement, um, a condition uh, that staff uh, noted for us regarding the uh, the DOT. Have you checked with them or applied with them at all? I have not done that yet. Okay. Can I ask a clarifying question from you, Ms. Cornell? Was that in regards to the signage due later or through the easement of the driveway? So, um, sorry. Uh, so, uh, any sort of commercial project, um, one of the requirements of the zoning ordinance is that bef before we issue an actual zoning permit, which would come after this process, mm -hmm. um, we would just ask that, that you make contact with DOT and have a conversation with them to make sure that, given that you're expanding your operation, that there aren't any improvements that they want to see made to the driveway connection. Um, sometimes that happens before this process. Uh, other times it happens after. In this case, as long as that's been done before, uh, assuming this board approves your project, as long as that's done before we issue a zoning permit for you to begin operating, just to give us some documentation to prove that you've had that conversation. Okay. It's unlikely that anything's going to be required because of the small, really relatively small nature of what you're doing. But we always want to just make sure that you know, the, the worst thing that could happen to you is to begin operating and then. DOT shows up a month later and says, now you have to do all these things that you didn't anticipate. So it's really to kind of help you avoid any surprises. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying. I just have a couple questions just for, for clarity. There was a, a note or two in the staff analysis on this, and it is 24 rather than eight students. Eight is the existing and 24 is the proposed. Is there, um, on this approval, is there any kind of res restriction that comes with that that holds it at 24 or? The, you would ha you would it, you would have to stipulate in your con in the conditions of approval that it be limited to 24. And with with this being R3, there's this is a compliant use with the R3 zone. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. It does anything. I believe, Samantha, I believe it's over eight students. Yes, anything over eight requires a conditional use permit. Okay. 
And just one thing for the applicants, when we got our application packets for all these, it was about this big by that big. And I will say, looking through and seeing this, you, you really made my day. That was one of the, <laughs> that was such a great thing of all the controversial things we see to see something that was colored like that made me smile. It makes me smile again today, so. Oh, that was a combined effort. <laughs> nice um, the children just for my it. own just to understand you so now you you will have this will be from three-year-old to six-year-old and you some somehow I said it was up to 30 but you said it was self-imposed 24 yes we won't go we won't have more than 24 students at this location because of the size of the building mm -hmm. um, and in Montessori, we want to have more square footage yes. per, chi per child yep. instead of less. Um, so we, I mean, it just wouldn't make sense to have more than 24 children in that space. And actually, we'll probably have 20 to 22 children there, but yeah. yeah the 24 is following um, guidelines set forth by the Montessori Association. I see. Hmm. Okay. <coughs> So to that end, I imagine if we add it as a condition, specifically capping something here consistent with the, what our powers are, you'd have no objection to that? No. Okay. Any other board questions for the applicant at this time? All right. Is there anyone here from the public that wishes to be heard? If I can just get a show of hands first. All right. Seeing none, would you like to make a closing statement? You don't have to. Oh, I also have um, an easement with our neighbor um, regarding our driveway usage that I would like to submit um, into evidence. You take a look at it and find out if it's admissible first. Mr. Chair, while, while the, the attorney's looking at that, I, I, we did suggest that she have that available in case a question of permission for access came up. So. Does anyone else on the board want to take a look at that before making a decision? I'm not sure that it's legally required. But to the extent it's informative. Give it the appropriate weight. All right, we'll go ahead and close the public phase of the hearing. I'd invite any board statements, questions, or motions. Mr. Chair, based upon the evidence presented to this board, including the following exhibits, the petitioner's application, the submitted development plan, GIS maps, the staff report, the findings of fact worksheet, testimony presented at this hearing, I move this board adopt the following findings of fact. One through six, seven A inclusive. We have a motion. Um, I, I did want to, well, I guess we have to address the motion before I offer any specific commentary here as to the, well, let's hear the motion first. Is there a second on it? I'll second. Right. Is now an appropriate time for discussion legally or do we need to cover the our base? The motion now has a second. Okay, I just wanted to go ahead and suggest a, a cap on this number of students if that's a concern for anybody. If that's not a concern for anyone else, then let's not bother, but I did want to at least raise that. Not a concern for me. No. Okay, fair enough. Motion and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Findings of fact are so adopted. Uh, Mr. Chair, based upon the foregoing findings of fact, for the reasons set forth therein, I move that the requested conditional use permit be approved. I have a motion? Second. A motion and a second. All in favor of approving? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimously approved. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for the wonderful drawing. Um, thank you. You're thank you. <laughs> if you want to come and collect this, you can have the original bag.
and let the record reflect that uh, the recused party stepped down um, appropriately before the next application. Any housekeeping matters you need to address prior to beginning? Copies on the way. All right. If we can have the applicant step forward with the understanding that we would probably take a two minute coffee break. <laughs> Have we seen yeah. the coffee? Zoning public hearing. Not yet, I'm hoping. <laughs> so this will be uh, zoning public hearing 2020-2. Uh, and let me just get my documents in order here just briefly. Um, while I'm doing that, do you want to go ahead and swear in the applicant? Sure. You don't have to swear. Brandon, you don't have to swear. The attorney do it. Yeah. Um. Gentlemen, if you guys will go ahead and get sworn in. Uh, whoever wants to start, state your name. You? Mark Brooks. I'm sorry, what? Uh, Mark Brooks. State your name one more time. Mark. Mark, Brooks. okay. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Okay. Mm. Um, next. George Deloach. George Deloach. Uh, raise your hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Um, attorneys, are you an attorney? I am. Um, we're not going to swear you in. Perfect. Um, let's uh, uh, state your name. Colin. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Okay, so um, I will do a brief summary of this project. So this is Zoning Public Hearing 2020-2, um, Overlook Plan Unit <coughs> Development. Uh, the addresses of the properties, uh, a number of properties, I believe there's one, two, three, four, five or six properties involved in this application. 109 and 111 Overlook Road, 24, 25, and 50 Delchester Lane. Uh, the owner of the property is EW Finance LLC, represented by Mr. David Moritz. Uh, the applicant is Church Street Company, which is represented by Mr. Deloach. 25-acre um, site. Uh, it's zoned R2 residential, uh, currently a vacant property. I think there is one single-family home on the site. Uh, and uh, it is served by public water and public sewer. Um, this public hearing was properly advertised in accordance with Buckham County Code and North Carolina General Statutes. Uh, and I would ask that all applicant and staff materials as presented be accepted into the record as evidence. The, uh, the applicant is proposing a total of 80 townhome units, um, which it would, it would, those units will be contained in 40 duplex structures. Um, I believe, similar to the previous applications, they're uh, proposing a 10-foot uh, setback from the adjacent property boundaries that would, that would contain those units um, with a firewall between uh, the townhome units uh, in the middle. So they would, they would be zero setback on, in the center and then 10 foot setbacks on the perimeter and from the edge of the right of way. Um, this application does meet all of your requirements uh, with that one exception, which you can approve um, if you so choose. Um, a couple of clarifying points that I, I wanna mention. Um, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let the applicant, there was some confusion in the application regarding the traffic study and some of the signal requirements or whether that's even applicable or not. So I'm actually gonna let the applicant clarify those points rather than butcher it myself. Um, if the board were to choose to approve this, uh, staff does recommend a number of conditions. I'll just read those briefly. Uh, that an NCDOT driveway permit be issued prior to construction. Um, all 911 addresses be assigned. Uh, stormwater and erosion control permits uh, be issued. I had suggested a traffic signal I'll, I'll just make note that that's in the recommended conditions and that was based on what I read in the applicant's materials. I'm not sure that's relevant anymore, so I'll let the applicant again clarify that point. Um, if you have any questions for me, that's kind of a brief overview. I do. Yes, sir. On your last item, <clears throat> the applicant shall install a traffic signal. Um, that's a reasonably benevolent proposal. What, what was the hang-up of technical? I, I believe there was an error in, in, in I, again, I'm going to let the applicant explain that. 
Um, <coughs> and and if, if the circumstances warrant a signal, I think staff is always going to defer to traffic safety where it's necessary. Um, I want the applicant and their traffic um, engineer to, to speak to that, um, if that's okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Yes, sir. All right, we will accept the recommendations and summary as provided by staff. And at this point, I'll open the floor to, to the attorney. Can you state your name for the record again? Yes, my name is Derek Allen. Mr. Allen, um, if you would go, like to commence the application, we'll address our questions down the road. Absolutely. And uh, starting where you left off there, uh, we are fine and accept the first uh, one, two, three, four recommendations from staff comments on conditions uh, and uh, as modified by Mark Brooks's testimony that will uh, come. Um, the fifth one regarding the traffic signal uh, will be modified um, uh, to agree to whatever NCDOT requires us to do, we'll do. Um, and I, I think that will be more clear once Mark gets up as our traffic engineer and expert. As the attorney for the applicant, uh, I'm here really just to walk us through uh, this process to talk about what evidence we have and to show where we meet uh, the requirements for the CUP and PUD application. Um, I have with me uh, the developer here, Church Street Company and George Deloach. I have with me uh, Mark Brooks and Brooks Engineering, who's our engineer on this project. And I have Colin Kenton, who's our traffic planning and design engineer and consultant. This is a piece of property that's come through the county a couple of times. Uh, it's previously been approved for more than twice the density we're asking for this, uh, this morning. Uh, the previous application uh, was more than three times the density that is being requested in this application. We knew that we needed to treat this one correctly. We knew that this is in a, uh, a high traffic area. We knew this is in a high population district. Uh, so what we did was we met with staff early, well before we planned to file the application. Uh, and before filing the application, we met with the neighbor group uh, based on uh, recommendations from staff and based on recommendations from the neighbor group that had been identified from the previous <laughs> rezoning applications that attempts at this property. We then submitted our application. We met again with that neighbor group. Uh, the first meeting was in November prior to application. Second meeting was on December 16th. We met for a third time with that neighbor group on January 27, and a fourth time with that neighbor group, neighborhood group on February 4. We made our engineer available. We made our developer available. We made the owners of the property available. We made our traffic engineer available. We met neighbors on site to walk through it. Uh, we realized that there was a second group that had formed. Uh, we tried to attend their meeting and were told not to show up. We invited them to uh, our uh, neighborhood meetings and asked for their input. We really did want and do want neighborhood input for this project. To, to be quite clear, we've been as inclusive as a develop, developer possibly can. From staff and from the neighborhood discussions, we realized that there are a couple things that we need to pay particular attention to. One was making sure that the density matched up with the surrounding neighborhoods. So we were looking at a lower density. Again, we are uh, three units per acre. Uh, the allowable maximum density is 12 units per acre, so we're roughly 25% of that. We knew that the surrounding neighborhood wanted to minimize grading. We knew that they wanted to minimize tree removal. So we took very careful care in our application, in our site plan, to do that. The zoning use that we're proposing, the townhomes, is an allowed zoning use, but requires a CUP and a PUD. That's why we're here uh, this morning. In addressing those, those uh, three things that we had identified, start with the lower density. Again, the maximum is 12 units per acre. Ours is about three units per acre or 80 units spread over the 26 acres. Previously approved was more than twice than that. And the last application that came before you was, um, didn't reach here, but the last application that came before staff was more than three times that density. We've minimized the grading by clustering the development. We've minimized tree removal and grading by reducing front setbacks. And we have a nice cushion in that the seller is retaining the five single family lots that are large lots that provides a nice cushion and greening effect across the entirety of the remaining property. I do have resumes for Mark Brooks, our engineer, and Colin Kenton, who is our traffic engineer. 
Um, we'll be introducing those rev uh, resumes and I'll pass those up and hand them out. Uh, and based on that and based on their experience, uh, we'd like to offer them up as experts. Uh, if if uh, council needs to cross-examine or otherwise uh, provide informa uh, information on that, we're happy to do that. Um, let me hand those up if I may. Mark Brooks is a civil engineer with Brooks Engineering Associates in Asheville. He has 19 years of experience as a civil and environmental engineer, has managed multiple residential development projects in the area. A sampling of those are on the resume and CV that's being handed out. Colin Kenton sitting to my left is project manager for TPD, which is traffic planning and design, which is uh, based here in Asheville. He has 27 years of experience as a traffic and transportation engineer, and he's the one who completed the traffic impact analysis for this project. Both will be offering positive testimony and will be available for any questions that the board may have. With that, I'd like to introduce my client, George Deloach, for some introductory comments from the developer. Thank you, Derek. I um, just wanted to very briefly introduce myself. Um, I've, uh, I've been looking at this property, I think since 2013, maybe 2014. Uh, my vision for the property has remained unchanged. I always wanted to do a low density townhome style development. Um, I, there were lots of reasons I wanted to do that, but I thought it was a particularly good fit for this site. Um, unfortunately, the landowners uh, had a different project in mind. Uh, they thought that the project could be developed with more density, and understandably, they wanted to maximize their price. But as you all know, uh, developers who have come in with proposals for significantly more density uh, have, have been unsuccessful, so fortunately for me, the deal came back around. Um, we uh, were able to, to figure out a way to make the deal work by actually retaining those single-family homes uh, that Derek referred to. Uh, so instead of buying, I think it's a total of 26 acres, we're buying more like 21 acres and we're retaining, uh, it's actually, uh, I think there's six homes on five parcels that they will retain. Um, the plan that we uh, came up with after uh, meeting with the neighbors, actually uh, as early as October, uh, we believe is the best way to develop this site. It mitigates land disturbance, uh, it mitigates tree removal, which seemed to be uh, uh, the big concerns of the neighbors we were, we were meeting with. Uh, I think the plan we showed them in October originally had 100 units, which is uh, as, as Derek uh, stated, still significantly below uh, what's been approved previously. Uh, we reduced it to 80. Uh, we've tried to be responsive to, um, to uh, other uh, comments and suggestions from the neighbors. And as Derek said, we've met with them four times starting in October and as recently as last week. Um, I did want to say for what it's worth, um, I'm in this for the long haul. I'm, uh, I intend to uh, develop uh, uh, these homes and it will be a, a rental commun community, a high-end rental community because it's very expensive to develop this kind of property. Uh, I, uh, but I look forward to, to owning them for literally decades. Uh, the first project I developed uh, in 1993, I still own. Um, we compete, it's in Burlington, we compete with the very newest properties in that market at the very top of the market. Because our property has zero deferred maintenance, the landscaping is very well maintained and obviously at this point very mature. Uh, we, uh, that's just the way we do things. It's gonna be a quality uh, community. Uh, we think fits in really well <laughs> with uh, the surrounding properties and uh, uh, we're excited about moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll call Mark Brooks to go through the engineering and the nuts and bolts of our application. Yeah. Uh, uh, first off, I'd like there there are some uh, some supplemental application information I'd like to present just to clarify a few things on the application. 
like the traffic signal. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. As a preliminary matter, did you want to address tendering him as an expert before he goes forward, or wait till after he? We can go ahead and do that now. I think based on his resume, based on the experience that I went through before, we would tender Mark Brooks as our in, uh, expert in civil engineering and environmental engineering. Can you, sir, can I just ask a quick inquiry? The, can you attest everything your attorney summarized in terms of your experience being fair and accurate, yes, sir. honest? Yeah. Um, and how many years experience did you have? Well, I've been a licensed professional engineer since 2001. Okay. And is the training and education and experience that you have been applied to your opinions that you're about to offer? Correct. Okay. Any objection to him being admitted as an expert at this time based on the resume that was submitted to us, the testimony offered by the witness and his attorney? No objection. All right. He is so admitted, so tendered. So um, just to go over you know, a couple of quick uh, site metrics and, and, and some of the corrections as indicated. Uh, so the, the property uh, that is currently uh, consists of six parcels that's owned by EWO, um, uh, uh, yeah. uh, EWO uh, can, is, is a total of 25.99 acres. Um, so uh, with regard uh, to the, the, you know, and, and, and the, our, the applicant here is proposing 80 proposed townhome units. So the density as described on the application, it could be viewed as, you know, one of two ways. It's either, you know, 86 units divided by the entire 25.99 acres, uh, which is 3.02 units per acre, or it could be viewed as 80 units on 21.66 acres, which is the remainder that will be uh, conveyed to Mr. Deloach, and that's 3.69 units per acre. So, um, you know, the, the math is what it is, but, but so it depends on how you want to view that uh, as a matter of record. Uh, again, either of these uh, significantly well below the 12 units per acre allowed per zoning. Uh, so that's, that's one of the corrections and what we just handled out. Um, uh, the existing homes that are there, as, as mentioned, are to remain with the existing uh, owners. Um, they will be subdivided into five parcels and, and be retained by um, uh, the current owners. Um, and the, the, those, those lots, uh, one through five, is shown on the preliminary plat, which was in the material presented as uh, sheet C-1.1. Uh, they range from 3.26 acres to 1.179 acres. Uh, and again, the remainder 21.66 acres would be conveyed to Mr. Deloach for the townhomes. Uh, the parking count does need to be corrected. I think the application had 186. We're actually showing 188. Uh, I do think we'll probably convert one of those or, or two of those slips into a single handicap parking at the sales office. So I think ultimately we'll end up with 187. Uh, the, with regard to the setbacks, our, our two setbacks uh, are a 20-foot front setback, 10-foot side, 20-foot rear. We do maintain the 10-foot side and 20-foot rear setback throughout the development. Uh, we are requesting that the units be able to be placed uh, right up to the right-of-way line. And again, that was uh, in an intent and, and really a reaction to the community meetings to minimize the overall disturbance and overall footprint of the development, retain as many trees as possible. Because what that effectively does is, since there, there's houses on both sides of the street, it narrows that entire development corridor, right? From back of house to on, on the high, high side of the, of the road to the back of the house on the low side of the road. Uh, if with 20 foot setbacks on both sides, that would add 40 feet uh, plus some, quite frankly, because having to tie in the grading on both end slopes. So, it would significantly increase the overall disturbance if we were to meet the 20-foot front setback. Um, the duplexes are shown on individual lots. Uh, so the proposed project does say it's, a, it's a, ultimately will be a 40-lot uh, subdivision. The reason for that is not so Mr. Deloach can convey duplexes, but it is simply to be able to facilitate a more residential building code. Uh, with the construction of the units. Uh, 
per early comments from the neighbors, we did shift uh, all the prior uh, proposals had the, um, uh, the entrance to the project um, coming in where the, the, the current driveways exist on, um, what's the name of the road? Del Chester Road, coming in where Del Chester Road intersects Overlook. Um, we, uh, after hearing, you know, the comments were essentially that there just was not enough time to come over the hill on Overlook and see cars exiting on Del Chester. So we moved the entrance to the project uh, further to the north or further downhill to increase the site distance. Uh, and we really maximized the, the, the site distance potential coming in out of that property from, from anywhere else. And this was done at, at no minor expense. It would have been a lot more cost effective to have just left the entrance into the property right where it is. Um, uh, the site served by the city of Asheville Water, uh, MSD sewer, we've already received the allocations for those. Uh, storm water to meet Buncombe County standards, uh, employing water quality and attention measures, uh, the, the intents to use the underground uh, chamber systems. There's four drainage areas on the property, each with a, with a stormwater control measure. Um, so that's about all I've got uh, with regard to just kind of the nuts and bolts. If, if there's any clarification on the clarifications, please ask. Mark, can you address the, the traffic signal issue that was referred to by staff? And Yes, uh, traffic signal issue. Uh, quite frankly, it was simply a mistake on my part. I, I take complete ownership of that. Uh, we were going, I was going through an early draft uh, version of the, the traffic study with Mr. Kenton uh, right before we made application. There was some discussion about some, some signals being needed, um, but not at the intersection of this project and Overlook Road. Uh, the recommendations in the traffic impact analysis did not recommend a traffic signal at the intersection of, of this project and Overlook Road. Purely just a mistake on the application on my part, and I was told to rectify it in the manner that we have by providing the I'm, I'm good with that. I'm, I'm, I, but um, we're here all day, and they just brought some coffee, and I know you want us to be alert for this. So we'd like to take two minutes to get coffee, and we'll be able to listen to that traffic engineer a lot better. Okay. We're good? Sorry about that. But my, my, but my daughter is telling me I'm quite poor. Well, if the teenager daughter said anything else, it would be like uh, newsworthy. She's 14. She went all my band t shirts, tennis t-shirts, t shirts, my tennis tournament t shirts, and I was these mom jeans that are all ripped up. So my favorite joke is, don't you buy some jeans, babe? And it's exactly the same thing that my dad probably told me when I was bad age. And she's like, so I'm funny. Still not yeah. funny. I do the same joke. Yeah, I'm sure you have like, this too. Get cold. My, my, Still not my, funny. Yeah, my daughter dies with jeans and holes up. I don't mean that at, 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 the, at the, you know, in, at, I mean, I mean new yes. know, designer jeans with holes up. It's I, 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 I sound like my dad. I, I didn't get it when I was that age. I don't get it. Yeah, never, never understood the. I thought you had to burn your holes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah. You, you wear out. Yeah, you wear. That's right. Got to start with those new jeans. Got to suck it up. So she's still, she's 14, but she's still my kid, so I put a dad joke in her lunch every day. I've done it since she's dad joke five. That's this morning's offering. <laughs> That's pretty good for a dad joke. So, so what when, the hell, man? So when she, uh, if they're good enough, she puts them on the refrigerator. I'm like, <laughs> like I, I did well on my school project. <laughs> no way I could come up with that every day. Oh, I, I, I sourced it. I've got I was about to say, you got a yeah. book. You got a I've book got an somewhere. Instagram page, but I just keep yeah. them so I can always yeah. go back to the one yeah. I've done at some yeah. point. She your only one? No, I've got. Uh, she was from a first wife, and then I got a four-year-old. Like she's compliant, and she'll still sit in my lap. My four-year-old is, man, we call him the passionate one. Yeah, 
we always said he'd be the first one to get arrested, the first one to break a bone, the first one to break a window. And last week, age four breaks a window, 130 year old house. Best part? He's trying to get his boots off of the windowsill by throwing his tennis shoes because he couldn't reach them. He took his tennis shoes off and was throwing them at the, the boots of the windowsill. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. It's very much better than crying. So, that, I think that's pretty smart. You knew I was upset. Well, there's two people. Don't call Kyle. Don't call Yeah, it's up. Break his instincts, too. It's like, all right. Not the last time he's going to see that. Oh, yeah. We, we counted from 2.30 to 6 and we picked the highest two hours. Where did you grow up? Greensboro. Yeah. So you like junior dentist? Oh, guy, okay, yeah. Summer. Yeah, that was, that's how I ended up here. Okay, so various times. How old are you? I'll be 49 this year. Greensboro. You can have to have one hour, 15 minutes. There's a lot of that's, that's a surprise. Like a Cooper Poyo. I know Cooper very well. Cooper is, I think uh, he's, he's older. He's one year old. But we would, we would be in the same age division for a year. Yeah. So we'd be in, in it for a year. Yeah. So we'd be in, in it for a year. Yeah. 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 So we'd be in, in it for a year. Yeah. 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 So we'd be in, in it for a year. So Cooper would come over and train with me at Feed My Indoor in Greensboro. Yeah. So I know he's kind of, I started in it. And it was like, I remember getting it. 40 to 50, I thought that was 40, it's 14. I said, it was like top five. How are you? Yeah, big for us. Good for us. Was it Jay? Well, you had two, Jay and Andy, but Jay was the oldest. Jay played Carolina. Yeah, Jay's who I remember. Here's what happened to Cooper. And I was starting to get better. Cooper, it's just a tough sport. It's a tough sport. It's a tough sport. It was so nice to him. Some of you, by his account, sucked. So he was... I thought it was just the, the coolest thing for some cool, one good established guy to hit with it. I know about it. I know about it. Now, I don't, I don't know, like, in a, like, in a break of all this, but he had two big problems. We were, you know, we were getting hauled around back and forth against Clubs. Cooper, there are people that's been in the first place. Yeah. Four or five people. It's what's peeing everywhere in the car. Well, it carried on like because he was rolling into, <laughs> I remember him rolling into this indoor tournament, and it's, it's cold as hell outside, and he's indoors, and he has all this uh, tennis stuff, and he has like a black trench coat, and he rolls up just a black trench coat over his tennis stuff, like, like a boxer. Woody, Woody, see young, he's about that. Woody's exactly what he said, and Woody carried on, so he went out there, but I think he's wild. Where is this? Are you from Burlington, too, or something? Greensboro. Greensboro. But, 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 and, and that, that was like the golden age of tennis. We were in between the back of the row. Right. Yeah, that was. Yeah. Yeah. Woody was incredible. Yeah, Woody was incredible. He was a badass tennis player. He was a badass tennis player. They went to Alabama for a couple years. And, uh, maybe. Maybe. No, I went to San Francisco for some I lived in uh, Barkstow's country. Mm -hmm. At least when I was there, and I was, you know, older than those guys. I don't know what the expense is, but this is the best tennis part of the house. Dave is on a downturn. You're all the person. Stay spot. Grimsley was a boss. This guy, Grimsley and I were in the same conference for those two years. We couldn't. For hours, actually. Those little punch things are expensive. Like, I suspect. Sherwood was like the son of tennis. Just now, it's funny, man. The big things you have a big cardboard gel with a pair of glass. Those things are convenient. It's a lot less waste.
I think that was about where it came from. Who's it? What's his last name? Webb. Uh, that's probably the way they do coffee. More than like that. Who's taking over Rose to Fry? Never had him. Well, commission who passed him. Oh, uh, it's, he's on the ballot. They kept him on the ballot. After the election, they were appointed to have the right and do that. How about Are you a registered Republican? I don't think so. <laughs> no, I'm not either. <laughs> now, actually, I was thinking of it. Always. <laughs> I was like a number of things. I mean, I had some of my Representative of the public that are on which I got. Belcher's a Belcher's real good. That's the reason. All right. He's, he's okay. On the middle, you've been okay. Well, that's the main problem. Support a lot of the things that I support. Well, I think he's pretty reasonable. That's that's the point. He, he he's in the mold. I think he he's fallen into the mold. Maybe he has been. He's in the free market. Uh, you know. Self-enterprising type of person. Yeah, he falls in. I'm a proper guy. I'm a proper guy. We're here talking to her. But I can see how he got in that. But he is a fear of a lot of times. Previous stuff, yeah. whatever he wants. Okay. I, have, okay. I, I, okay. Okay. I just wasn't sure. Yeah. Um, I missed that somehow. And yes. all yes. Yes. No, I mean, that's not we we never had it. Yeah. 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 Side of the mouth. Okay. I've never done that. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. One guy. So, you know, I'd be, I'd be showing what I think are really good looking offices. Typical apartment deals, and that might scare them because they're either. The scale's wrong. Right. I see TV. You're going to put a lot of money on it. What is George Reed? Well, it's changed a little bit. It's going to go a little bit. Right. It hasn't changed. What, what, what does he think we can do? What does he want us to commit to? Or just on that line? I mean, how could we do that? I don't know. Who's, who's how's, the, how's real estate? We know we're kind of arbitrary. It must be. I mean, do we even have room to do it? Our way is we've got some the last of the builders' houses. And Bonita, and uh, they have a soul. But the last were two people, two bedrooms. There's just not that much market for it. So, well, the thing is, the term of the law is in all cases the price. Believe it or not, that's the one thing that you can adjust that we have seen. He's probably he's probably uh, not as attractive or like you They're not they're smaller lots. Yeah, based yeah, on so they're, they're not as attractive. They're not as uh, fifteen miles over the scary well they only know the big thing. Way to get him sold. So the price. But he's probably up against breaking. Not bad. Not bad. And if he's if he's there, you know, it, it may be hurts. Yeah. 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 Look at the way a developer works. It's, it's a, it's a I'm at parabola. He gives away a lot to start yeah. with, and then he starts making money. He makes a ton of money in the middle of the development. So the, your site doesn't get, get out of the last couple of sites. He won't do that. Well, that's what most, I'm just saying most of them operate. Yeah. And it determines the point well, the works are we've been expecting a table flattening of market space. We've been talking about it. Mean, our circle site is different. It's space right. for yeah. Yeah. But coronavirus, yeah. Go in and yeah. Just yeah. what's yeah. So you will be based on the data. Oh, yeah. It'll be a problem. It gets worse and worse. Yeah. 
Friday afternoon, Scott. So, 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 yeah, that'd be good, right? Yeah. <laughs> Josh mentioned that. That all kind of started back in the session. We, uh, we started our little Christmas party, which was kind of whiskey based. Yeah, here's another. And we have a lot left there. Just a lot of bottles left there. And they the session, they will. They do. They won't fill up. They will not fill up. They'll buy 100. 4.30, 4.45. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I just, uh, Friday, uh, uh, you know, geotechs and some engineers and suppliers. That's so right. You know, having about, you know, 15, 10 to 15 people in the office Friday afternoon. You know, five, five, about 5.45, everybody's phone started ringing wide. Where are you? Yeah. And we knew not everybody's around getting drunk and everything. So that's that's one or yeah, two tastes of whiskey. I, my vote would be on my vote would be to look around. It was good. I miss those days because we really it was good to chat with others. You're, you're, you're not going to know. Well, you're, you're, you're not. Just in you're general not, development. Not, world, 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 world. Mostly we just complain about clients and not paying. And, you know, and they've been system. very, very conservative. Uh, commiserating on the recession. And saying, oh gosh, we only have three more weeks of February and yeah. we've had such I mean, a really, so why would I go ahead and get down? So I'll look at it. We were all just trying to weather the storm.
you had done that sub metering thing before. Uh, yeah, I try. Yeah, it was like a bunch of people. Oh, yeah. If I can have everyone uh, settle down a bit so we can hear the questions. All right. Mr. Allen, if you'd like to proceed with your cross examination or direct examination. Sure. I think we were concluding Mr. Brooks' testimony. He was addressing uh, the traffic signal issue. I guess the only question I have is uh, just to clarify the traffic impact analysis does not recommend a signal, correct? That's correct. And NCDOT has not recommended a signal, correct? Correct. I don't think we have anything direct uh, from Mr. Brooks. Any board questions for this witness? At this time, I'll just go ahead and let you run through any witnesses that you want to call, and then we'll save our questions for shortly after that. Certainly. Uh, I'd like to introduce our traffic impact uh, engineer, um, Colin Kenton. Good morning. I'm Colin Kenton with Traffic Planning and Design. The traffic impact study we completed, uh, we uh, submitted as required a, sc a scope of the study to NCDOT for their approval and received their approval um, back at the, uh, I think the end of October. Uh, the, the NCDOT procedures and scope uh, follow a detailed methodology for analysis of traffic impacts, uh, which we followed. Um, the first off, we collected traffic data uh, in October uh, 17th uh, in 2019 on a Thursday. We collected traffic uh, during the a.m. peak hour between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. And then in the p.m., to include the school traffic, we collected data from 2.30 p.m. till 6 p.m. Uh, from that, we analyzed three peak hours, the morning peak hour, uh, the peak hour during school being let out in the afternoon, and then the p.m. peak hour. Uh, the trip generation for the proposed 80 townhomes uh, is a very uh, <coughs> low trip generator. Um, it's only anticipated to generate 39 trips during the a.m. peak hour, and then 48 trips in the p.m. peak hour and that is a mix of entering and exiting traffic. Uh, total daily trips are 586 daily trips uh, entering and exiting the site. Uh, we analyzed the intersections of Overlook at Hendersonville Road, um, and during the AM peak hour, we're adding 26 trips to that, 26 vehicles to that intersection uh, for a less than 1% uh, impact and in the p.m. we're adding uh, 31 vehicles to that intersection uh, for a less than 1% impact. We also studied the intersection of Overlook at Pinshot and <coughs> Springside. During the a.m. we're adding a total of 13 <coughs> vehicles during the a.m. peak hour uh, for still less than 1% impact and during the p.m. peak hour, we're adding a total of 16 vehicles, uh, which has a 1.4% uh, impact. Uh, we also did analyze the site drive, and currently the uh, traffic study, which was submitted to NCDOT, is under their review for their uh, review and uh, recommendations back to us.
you all have any questions. Well, well at this time, I, I'd probably just make sure we ask our due diligence questions as far as you being an expert. I don't believe that you've been admitted as an expert yet, though. I, I, have you fairly applied your training expertise and uh, education to the facts as presented to you in, with respect to this case and offering yes. your opinion? Yes, I have. Okay. And how many years' experience do you have as an engineer? Uh, I've got 27 years' experience of an engineer. I've been licensed as a professional engineer since 1997. Okay. Does anyone have any objection to the admission of his? Is, is this is a proper representation of your resume? Yes, sir. Does anybody have any objection to admitting both the resumes of both the experts and tendering him as an expert? No objection. No, they're good. All right. You're so tender as an expert, and we'll go, go ahead and apply the testimony retroactively to be expert testimony. Thank you. I'll be happy to go through my closing now or save it for rebuttal. I'm really asking the board's direction on that. Fair enough. Uh, generally, what we'd like to do is hear from the public, and I'm guessing most of the people left are here for a reason. Can I get a show of hands of who intends to speak? All right. So we'll go ahead and call each one of them as witnesses first, give you a chance to cross-examine them if you see fit. You do not have to. Um, again, just. For those of you who have not been here before, opinion, speculation, idle kind of pokes at, at what may or may not happen with traffic is generally inappropriate unless you have some specific expertise or knowledge in that. So please keep that in mind as you testify, but otherwise I'm happy to hear from everyone here and it will take as long as it takes, but we do want to give you a chance to be heard um, just on the proper admissible things. And if I stop you, I'm not trying to be rude. We're just trying to keep you, keep our I's dotted and T's crossed. And, and just for the record, I'll, I'll say that we'll rest our direct evidence and go through the evidentiary pieces and rebuttal pieces and closing at the end. That sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Um, I don't remember every single person who raised their hand. Surprise, surprise. So if we can start, um, whoever would like to begin first. We'll have Haley swear you in. Or Josh. Hello, my name's Richard Ferris. I live in the Oak Forest. Sorry, um, state your name for the record. Right. Richard Ferris. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, uh, this will be less than two minutes and, and shut me down if I'm out of line. But it is regarding um, traffic. I think uh, functional concerns are you've got two phases. One is the construction phase, and then one is the subsequent public use phase. And I'm concerned because Overlook is a one lane each direction, narrow road, uh, elevation changes, and it's really not set up for emergency. I worry about emergency vehicles coming and going and how that would be inhibited both during construction and afterwards. And um, the school zone and the rush hour use, I think, is a, con is a concern too because uh, it's a, that, that road is sort of a primary access road. There aren't alternatives to it. So I think anything that slows down traffic is, is to be considered in terms of the overall public good. So it's a public good issue. And then thirdly, I don't know if the road itself is built to handle the uh, load capacities of clearing and construction and those kinds of things, because it is a narrow one lane, not well lit at night kind of place. So I think there are multiple public concern issues. And that's all I would ask you to consider. Thank you. Thank chair, you very much. And, and chair, for uh, and I'll try to keep this as informal as possible, but for uh, the purposes of, of that testimony and as a continual objection, we would object to anything that uh, would uh, necessarily require any kind of engineering expertise in the traffic area as well as civil engineering, environmental en engineering, et cetera. And again, I'll try to, to keep down on that, but that, that will be a continual objection. I'll leave it up to mm -hmm. your county attorney and, and the board's discretion on uh, uh, how much of that to let go. So uh, your objection is noted, and I'll direct the board not to consider the portions of that that speak to expert testimony with respect to the portions that 
kind of took the form of an inquiry as to the public good element of the ordinance, <coughs> that part I, I will give you an opportunity to respond to because I think that's a valid question to ask, um, albeit you, I, you're not obviously able to testify to the traffic itself. I, I do think there's a question in there that is certainly I just wanted to voice my concerns for your consideration. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Do you have any questions for this witness, Mr. Allen? I do not. All right. Thank you, sir. And again, ladies and gentlemen, as you come up and speak, uh, Mr. Allen is an attorney. He has a job to do with respect to objecting. So if he objects each time, he's not being rude. He's doing exactly what's within his rights and, and what's prudent to do for the record here. And we'll make a ruling on every objection that he makes. Uh, state your name. Amanda Rose. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. I just want to say that um, it has been said that we've known about this since October, but for some of us, it's not exactly true. Um, I've only known about this since January, so some of our, the um, residents in this area may not have had enough time to um, know about this. And also, we have a, um, a petition of 200 and counting who are opposed to this. Objection. As to? As to the relevance of people who aren't here that may have signed a petition. Mm -hmm. I'll direct the board not to consider substantively what the petition may have said or, or may say and the number of people that may or may not have signed it. Okay. But your concerns are, are duly noted and heard here. Um, where did you say you live? Lake Mountain. Lake Mountain. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lynn Young. Uh, sorry, so, sir, um, state your name one more time. Lynn Young. Okay. I'm a resident of Oak Forest. Can you raise your right hand? Sure. Uh, do you swear or from to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. I, I really have uh, a couple of questions which I didn't uh, see addressed yet. And I, and I look at the, the plans plan for the subdivision and I, I don't see a lot of elevations on there uh, it's hard to tell I'm I have questions about where it's going to drain I've seen storm texts on the plans detention systems but is that going to be further vetted and to uh, assess how much water is going where is it going to drain to Dingle Creek? Is it going to drain to Overlook Road? It's, uh, will there be city or county expertise to check that to see how that's going to, or has that already been done? If county staff would like to speak to that, you may. Otherwise, I'll leave it in the applicant's discretion to decide how to respond. Yes, sir, thank you. Sorry. Uh, yes, sir, uh, good question. So, Assuming this project does get approved today, um, the next step for the applicant would be to submit a fully engineered site plan that includes all of the stormwater, pr the proposed stormwater control systems for the site. Um, the county, we have on staff uh, Mr. Mike Goodson, who's a licensed civil engineer, and he's our stormwater uh, program manager. So he reviews and either approves or denies all stormwater applications. Similarly, we have a... a, a, a a gentleman who does uh, site plan review for erosion control purposes um, and he's he's looking to assure that all county and state requirements for for um, erosion control are met um, both of those gentlemen have reviewed these plans preliminarily and and have stated that just at, at a at a 30,000 foot level their stormwater plans seem appear appropriate but the full technical review would happen in the next phase of the development process and, and the only thing that I would add to that is staff has suggested, and we have, of course, accepted uh, two, uh, two um, conditions to our development that have to happen uh, if this is approved, and that is applicants shall obtain stormwater permit approval prior to issuance of uh, permits for construction, and the applicant shall obtain erosion control permit approval prior to issuance of permits for construction. So uh, this isn't the last step on either one of those items. Okay. Um, and the brings up another question, Overlook Road. I'm told this is state road, and although it's not more maintained, and it doesn't really have uh, storm drainage. It's very, it's the erosion ditches, a good part of it. 
um, some of it has had some minimal work done on it. And are the uh, are are sidewalks and uh, um, stormwater management structures going to be on Overlook Road out outside this development where it drains to, like uh, curb and and uh, curb inlets and. There's no improvements planned for Overlook Road, no. All the stormwater management is handled internally. We do have uh, curb and gutter and, and again, the stormwater control measures uh, as shown on the plans. And then it, it drains to detention systems. I, that's what it looked like. I just couldn't tell which, uh, which part of it drained which way. Um, I have a second uh, question about the undeveloped parcels along Overlook Road that are kind of buffer the, the, this project from uh, Overlook Road. Um, are they going to be developed in the future, those parcels that are between Overlook Road? I think he's referring to the parcels that would be retained by uh, EWO uh, Finance, and so those will be retained by the current owner. They're not part of Mr. Deloach's project. Uh, I think the intention is for them just to remain as rental houses, uh, single family rental houses as they are currently, but I, you know, their future uh, plans, I, I, can't, I can't attest to. Okay, so that buffer, that really can't be necessarily considered as a future permanent buffer for this project at least, because those lots can still be developed Okay, <clears throat> let's see. And I have, I don't know if this will be <laughs> legit, but we'll try it. Uh, I live there, as probably many of the people who are here uh, outside the project do. <coughs> and traffic there backs up past the entrance from Hendersonville Road regularly in the summer when all the summer residents come to Buncombe County and that it's six probably it amounts to six months out of the year traffic backs up at four o'clock in the afternoon from Hendersonville Road all the way up almost I've seen it back up to Westridge while having a, any kind of an accident just an, an enormous oversupply of cars on, on a too small road and this new development, I guess, is bringing 187 vehicles into this. So I, I think it'd be fair to say there will be some traffic issues there. And will there be a turning lane for this? Will there be turning lanes for the entrance? Uh, if they're recommended by the DOT. Okay, it's the state. Is doing that NC. Well, and I'll, I'll add at this point, this is uh, on the NCDOT's uh, traffic improvement plan. Um, so NCDOT, and that's what, we're not ducking the questions, but NCDOT, NCDOT has a bigger plan for this corridor, and you know, they're going to tell us what they need to do in relation to their bigger plan as they roll forward their improvement projects. Is there any... Uh, uh, is there any way to find out what that is? I, because I, I, I don't know how to, because that's going to impact greatly the, uh, the traffic there. What are they going to widen Overlook Road because it, it uh, actually has erosion ditches for storm drainage down the slope alongside this development. Right now, the DOT's project is to add turn, additional turn lanes at the Hendersonville Overlook intersection. And that right. construction is supposed to start this summer. Right, but, but at the actual entrance to our project, turning Right now, they, all they've completed is a feasibility study on improvements. Um, but I'm, with addition of bicycle lanes and sidewalks, I'm not sure if there's any additional travel lanes. But they, they are going to put sidewalks out? Uh. It is a, presently that is a, uh, they've only completed a feasibility study and that has not, 
received any funding yet, so there is no uh, expectant date of when that might happen. I'm going to ask just for efficacy and, and fairness to say that we take any questions about what the DOT may or may not be doing to kind of a sidebar. I don't object to you having a conversation outside the room, but at this point, it, as to this hearing specifically, I was hoping to hear from the public at large about the remaining issues here. Correct. Um, thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Chair, a point of order. I haven't heard any objections from the applicant, so I, I think that I can leave this in the applicant's discretion to object further. But I think it's important for the board and, and the public to remember that while the board wants to hear public, in, public uh, uh, concerns and, and relevant testimony about this project, anyone speaking is limited to giving only relevant testimony and only people with standing can appropriately cross-examine uh, the applicant. Uh, that's something that if, if, it, if it happens without objection from the applicant, I think that, that that's okay. General questions to the staff about the process, I think it's helpful for those to be answered to an extent, but uh, we have been in here at times where we've gotten to five and six o'clock. Uh, so if, if we could keep the scope narrow and, and, and get the really pertinent questions to this application and the relevant testimony, I think that would be in everyone's interest. Th th thank you, Counselor. And uh, to that end, I had that in my general comments that I was going to do at the end, but I'll go ahead and, and put that in. I do have a general objection, standing objection uh, on standing grounds to anyone who is not immediately adjacent as a neighbor to the property. And we'll, we'll leave that as a standing objection on standing, if that's fine with Council. I, I think for <laughs> reasons that we've had, over the previous two hearings, standing is something we're very well versed in, unfortunately. Um, I don't know that we can do a standing objection without knowing what parties are attempting to assert standing at this time. I think we'd have to address that on a case-by-case -case basis for due process reasons. But thus far, I've not heard anybody argue standing, so I will, unless you affirmatively submit standing, I will treat it, I think, appropriately as, as any party that comes up here will have to prove it or at least allege it sufficient per the statute. And let's stick to the two minutes for the speaker. I don't think we can do that. Um, I, I will just say generally it's difficult for people to pay attention to hours of the testimony. We've been here until about 9 o'clock before, so do with that information what you will. I, ethically, I cannot put a cap on the amount of time that someone speaks, but we are human beings, so do with that what you will. My name is state. Karen Nab. I'm an officer at the. Sorry, um, um, can you state your name for the record? Karen. Karen Nab. K N A B. Uh, uh, raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Um, I'm an officer with the Blake Mountain HOA, and I've got questions rather than comments, actually. One question is we've been told that as many trees as possible will be maintained. But I noticed there's no parameters around that. Have you used a certified arborist to work with you while you're doing construction? Because construction will affect even trees left standing. And is there any guarantee going forward to the neighborhood that the lot will be, what does as many as possible mean? Question number one, and that's my only question about trees. Question number two involves- I, Can I stop you real quick before you sure. go further? Because it, it, you're representing an HOA and in fairness to Council's objection. I do think the standing issue is something we can talk about okay. or have to talk about before you ask him a question, um, unless he consents to the question outright, which you have the right to do. No, and I had a, a, an issue with the question too. I, I think that's a design question, but I'll, I'll let you go, Chair. So I, I, I'm sure our staff attorney is, is much more well versed in, in being able to articulate this better than I, uh, despite my cursory knowledge of the law. Um, if you want to ask a question, you, you should probably assert standing. If you want to do that, I can't help you through that process, but that would be the only way in which we could hear kind of a back and forth cross-examination situation that you're offering. Well, I am an attorney, although not, I'm from Virginia, not North Carolina. So my point would be, I am an officer of the HOA. We have had HOA meetings on this topic. I'm happy to present myself as, you know, certified to speak, but if you guys want to challenge it, I'll then I'll speak as a private citizen. I have no obje objection to you speaking. Where's the HOA at? Blake Mountain. Okay. It's right up the hill. It's at, we it's at Westridge, just past Delchester. Fair enough. Um, 
I suppose we, if you have any inquiries specifically about standing from our last hearing that we discussed, but. I, I would ask uh, whether you uh, wish to ask questions to the applicant or are you okay to give testimony uh, in your role as an official from the Homeowners Association? If you're willing and satisfied to just give testimony as an official with the HOA, I think your associational relationship with the HOA is between you and the HOA. Uh, Fair enough. If you would like to establish standing, there is a legal test. I'm happy to share it with you. Uh, I, I'm not trying to hi hide the ball, but before we get into that. Understood. I mean, I don't, we, we don't have to go down that route. I'll just present my other questions as an observer who lives in the neighborhood. I, I think Fair if there are rhetorical questions that you know may go unanswered because they aren't going to be uh, officially put before the applicant, uh, that's, that might be okay. The board can consider those rhetorical questions, give them whatever weight they may um, <clears throat> they may deserve otherwise i know everybody be... wants to expedite this so that's fine <laughs> let's just go that route all right and and really more than rhetorical questions i think what would be helpful for the board would be competent relevant evidence i'll do my very best thanks i will say ma'am uh, given what you've said so far i have no interest in expediting this i i want to give you and the represent organization that you represent the adequate opportunity to ask any questions that you have so if we, I, and we I would say it, it might be appropriate at this point just to share the test for standing with her so she can know exactly where we're at in terms of what's already been alleged. And do you want to take somebody else during that process? I mean, I'm not trying to hold you up. No, no. This okay. is a couple I, quick questions. It, it, could be, it could be helpful for the public as well. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and this is going to be slightly abridged from the exact statute. Uh, and I'm going to use a shorthand, just homeowners association. Uh, there's, there's a larger definition, which I'll read. Uh, an, an incorporated or unincorporated association to which owners or lessees of property in a designated area belong by virtue of their owning or leasing property in that area or an association otherwise organized to protect and foster the interests of the particular neighborhood or local area. I think that is a way to describe a homeowner's association. In order to have standing, at least one member of the association uh, must have standing uh, as an individual to standing to, to challenge a decision uh, and the association must not have been created uh, in response to this particular development all of those would be correct can you if you're if you are asserting standing I would ask that you inform the board of that and then walk through that test we would need to know who the individual is how they have standing and uh, what I, assume, I assume you're talking about me, right, as the representative? I, it, it Sometimes. It, it depends. Well, I mean, Blake Mountain is an unincorporated HOA. We have bylaws. We have um, all the accoutrements of being an HOA. Um, I'm the secretary of the organization. The president of our organization is also here. And we are speaking on behalf of the members of our HOA. that in and of itself would not satisfy the standing test there would need to be a showing of standing by an individual who is in the homeowners association but what other what other requirement for standing do you have besides being an officer of the hoa do you live there yes is there at least one other person who lives there who's a part of your organization yes the president is also here and there would need and to be also a showing lives, of special and also lives there, there. And the secondary question is, is there, sh is there a showing of special damages that you would suffer by virtue of your standing? And that's the last question I'm going to ask you. I promise. They're speculative is the difficulty at the moment. I'll let you speak to it. I, I, I have no problem with you sp speaking or arguing it. Um, I've asked the tree question and I'll go on to the traffic questions which have been discussed at great length among neighbors of this proposed development and I have to say that we're realistic about the fact that it's a property that is certainly eligible to be developed this proposal is probably the most rational one that we've heard and yet we continue to think that a number of significant questions have not been taken into account and I will limit them to three at the moment one of them is, did the traffic study take into account 
not just that somehow 187 parking places are only going to generate 40 some trips, which sounds improbable on a rational basis. Chair, ob they objection to, to this line of question on the, the traffic impact study, unless she's a traffic expert. Once again, I, I'm I think I'd have to let her finish at this point, only because she's not offering them as questions that, that to be asked as much as considerations right now. Understood. Has the study taken into account the increased incidence of delivery trucks, of guests, of handymen and landscapers, particularly given the fact that the developer has spoken to the fact that they're very attentive to ma maintenance and to emergency vehicles since there are no shoulders on any stretch of overlook except down by the library on the opposite end. Secondly, has it looked at the impact on Hendersonville Road where yesterday, at, I know that this is purely my own observation, there were 42 cars waiting to make the turn at Hendersonville Road and Overlook. This was at four o'clock before rush hour started. Last but not least, have they looked at the impact on the development itself? People coming out of that development, particularly without a traffic light, which we understand is now the situation, trying to make a left turn toward Hendersonville Road are going to be confronted with cars powering up the hill from Henderson Road, Road itself and also coming down the right-hand lane, which they're going to have to turn into to be able to make the left turn to go to Hendersonville Road, is going to impact the development as well as it impacts us. And those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you. And just as a general matter, I, I would direct the board to give appropriate <coughs> weight to the appropriate testimony the things that she offered with personal knowledge are gen appear admissible to me. The things that are speculative um, disregard as appropriate for. And, and I'll just renew my objection to standing after hearing that. Okay. Um, you do not have to answer any of the questions that she offered. Um, I don't think that she made a showing for standing, and I also think that she kind of abandoned that partway through as well. But the considerations are duly noted. Uh, State your name for the record. Yes, hi, David Buckner, B-U-C-H-N-E-R. Uh, raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do, yes. Uh, one of, obviously, our main concerns is the traffic situation, and I wanted to address that first and foremost. Um, I'm sure staff and the commission is aware that uh, one of the biggest traffic generators on that road is the four schools that exist on the other end of Overlook. Are you familiar with that? 3,700 students with a lot of car pools and a lot of, obviously, uh, <coughs> the high school has students that travel, that come and go. Um, when I started reading the traffic study, I noticed that the time frame seemed a little unusual at the corner of Overlook and Hendersonville Road. It stopped at 4.45 p.m. Now, they may have done a traffic count beyond that, <coughs> So I went, dug in a little bit deeper, and is the staff and the commission aware that, that October 17th, that Thursday, was an early release day for all four schools? <laughs> yes? No? Now would not be an appropriate time to ask the board questions. I, I want to hear your concerns, but okay. Well, that, that I, I would deem the traffic study invalid. And I'll object if, to anything related to opining about the traffic study. Okay. I would well, say, unless you're an expert, you, you would not be permitted to question the validity of the study, though the concerns you raise are something the board can consider independent. Yes, I, I would like to have them strongly consider the impact of four schools, 3,700 students, their parents, carpool issues, and so on, not being available, uh, let's see, early release would have put them approximately 1 p.m. that day, not to mention all the after-school activities that are canceled on early, re early release days. So no sports, no clubs, et cetera, et cetera. So from 1 o'clock uh, p.m. onward, there would be virtually no activity at the schools. Objection, Chair. Okay. Say the grounds of your objection, please. Uh, it, opining with something that could ar arguably be introduced as evidence that's not here for me to cross-examine. Do you have personal knowledge of the school being closed at that time? Uh, I believe the Buncombe County School calendar is uh, public record. And I, I have, I, I don't have a student in the school, they're both freshmen in, in college, but I have friends that have school students and I checked with them via text because this just came to my attention. Objection. And 
that, that would be hearsay. hearsay. That part I could not, I can't let you say it to the board. Okay, well, I, I would request that the board dig into that further and verify that that was an early release day. And the effect on the traffic study. Thank you. Uh, my second main concern is um, the recombination, I think it's called, of the plat. Is that the proper terminology? Um, there's going to be one, two, three, five parcels left. Um, some of them like islands inside of the development. Um, what restriction do the current owners have to come and add density because they're smaller parcel sizes? may afford them the opportunity to not have a public hearing to do something to add density, add, um, you know, apartments, not just duplexes, on those additional parcels that are kind of scattered. If you saw the site plan, you'll notice that those single family parcels, which aren't highlighted, uh, two are on Overlook Road and other ones are buried well inside the development. And what effect do they might have in the overall scheme of traffic et cetera, if they get developed. Are they required to do a traffic study if they decide to add density onto those parcels? Sir, I, I believe the board has already informed you once the questions to the board directly are not appropriate at this time. What the board is looking for is competent, relevant evidence related okay. to this project. Can I, can I direct that to staff then? No, sir, I don't believe that's appropriate either. Okay. All right, that was item uh, two. Um, setbacks, uh, I think, which is the main concern of the application. Uh, request for zero setback affords virtually no parking in front of the units on the driveways. I, I measure just roughly about 13 to 15 feet on average would be the parking space. And most cars. Objection, unless the witness is a civil engineer, Your Honor. Okay. I, I'll let him finish his sentence first so we can hear sure. what his assertion is. I, I think it's a uh, concern of safety because people are still going to try to park on those limited dimension driveways and pickup trucks and so on would have tail ends sticking over into the road, spilling over to the road. Same objection. Uh, <clears throat> my third concern is the building height. Um, it is such a dramatically steep slope property, and, and I'm in the building business. Uh, I think that those buildings would easily exceed the 32-foot minimum. Um, 40 units, 40 buildings, rather. Um, that's, a, that's a lot of buildings that are going to be built on steep slopes that are far going to exceed that based on my expert opinion in the building business. Objection, um, unless he's an engineer. Uh, I think the building height is a builder question more so than an engineering question. That's vertical. Engineering would be uh, horizontal, if I'm not mistaken. To the extent that we're getting into anything that's speculative or opinion-based testimony or, or going contrary to what an expert has said, I think the most appropriate form of testimony would be that in the form of an expert. If you are submitting to have expertise in a specific area, I'm happy to hear that, and I think okay. that would be appropriate at this L time. Let me just leave that as a concern. Um, at this point, so uh, that concludes my my questions and comments. If anybody has any questions for me, I'll give the applicant an opportunity to cross-examine. No, thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. As we call up the next individual, I uh, again I'll just kind of offer the cursory explanation, the, the quick version that I'm going to summarize without putting you through all three years of law school and legal practice. It's, it's very difficult to offer opinion testimony unless you're an expert. I will not deny anybody the opportunity to present themselves as an expert. However, I think what we're gonna find is, is that you're going to, it is objectionable testimony if you offer an opinion and you've not certified yourself or tendered yourself as an expert in the field in which you plan on speaking. So a lot of stuff that's speculative about traffic anything speculative about what this is going to do to affect crime rates, anything about um, engineering standards or building standards, those are generally going to be things, unless they're personal observations in a very limited way, um, those are generally not going to be admissible. I'll hear it, and I'm, I'm going to continue to hear that because I want to hear what the community has to say,
but we're running into a, a little bit of the legal side of this, and I, I don't want anyone to feel like this is not an accessible board, but I have to abide by the law as, as required by the statute. So just keep that in mind as we go forward. Uh, state your name for the record. Karen Ferris. Do you swear or to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Hello, my name is Karen Ferris, and my married name is Karen Rose. And I'm very much opposed to the zero setback request being made today, and this is why. I am an expert in this field because I live in Blake Mountain, and my house actually will overlook this site that has been prospectively chosen to build on. Objection or an expert. I'm a resident of Blake Mountain, and I can see the project. I will not be driving past it. So I, I think what you're asserting is standing more than I'm a first-person account is of this. I hear that. I, I'm, I'm just help, I'm, I'm offering you the opinion that it, it's probably standing <coughs> you're asserting, not expert testimony at this point. Okay, well, it's personal testimony. That's what I mean to say. I, I concur. Okay. Um, so, yes, I understand more people want to move to Buncombe County and the city of Asheville. It's been voted number one, one of the top ten places to live, and there are very um, beautiful trees and mountains that people come here to see. The steep slopes which are on Frady Mountain, Frady Mountain is the name that was given to this mountain on which this site exists. It is full of trees. It is 60 year old, not an arborist, but but they are trees that are very tall, 60 feet, 70 feet. I have not measured them personally, but they're very big poplar trees that have been there probably since I was born, which is 61 years. But I'm not an expert on that. I'm just saying that's my conjecture. Um, hi, Overlook Road is a hypotenuse to a triangle. This is Long Shoals. This is Hendersonville Road. Overlook is the hypotenuse. Basically, it snakes around between the two mountains, Blake Mountain and Frady Mountain. It's F-R-A-D-Y. Trees are a large reason why we moved to Asheville from New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. The mountains and beauty and nature give Asheville its top 10 ranking as one of the most desirable places to live. And it's a very beautiful topography that very much is different from New Orleans, for sure. Um, unfortunately, out-of-town developers and their team of investors want to capitalize on this beauty as well. <coughs> I live at 113 Galloway in Blake Mountain Estates. We bought the L.B. Jackson's home. He was the developer who built the Jackson Building downtown. Our home looks over Overlook Road onto this Frady Mountain woods. This is not a suitable site for 80 apartments, in my opinion. It's um, very little buildable acreage, and the amount of trees that will have to be cut, and the land will have to be graded to flatten Objection. it. Okay. I'm not a traffic engineer, but there's one entrance and one egress to this proposal, and I see that as a problem if you have a 24-foot... Objection. Grounds. If you have a fire truck. Hold on one second, ma'am. Yeah. What are the grounds for your objection? She says she's not a traffic engineer and then starts going into traffic engineer expert territory. If you can finish your sentence and okay, I have seen a fire truck and I've seen 18 wheelers and trucks that are 24 feet long, and that's what the standard size of a fire truck is. They come much longer. 
if there's a one entrance and one egress, when it makes that wide turn to go in to save a person that has made a call in this, in this project, this housing development, he will have to make a wide pull turn to get in there, and then he'll have to make a wide pull turn out. And that Basis of my objection, Your Honor. To the extent that you've raised safety as a concern, that is something the board can consider. The specifics of the speculation will disregard. Okay. As a driver, I've seen trucks that have to make a big wide turn to turn a corner, a tight corner like that, a 90 degree turn. We, as we've been mentioned before, we have three public schools and the Skyland Bun South Buncombe Library. Each and every person that rents in that, this development, if it is approved, there are bedrooms. If you count the number of bedrooms, you can assume that there are people that may or may not be sleeping there, but probably everyone will have a car. Objection. Sustained. Okay, the rules that you all, as a board, have to rule on are down on the books. And I am asking that if you do not reject this today, that we at least have time to vet this proposal more thoroughly with legal representation. I talked to Attorney Golden, and we had a, a consultation on the phone. And we discussed this, and he said that he or any attorney that would take this case would need to have more than the 19 days in which to prepare and to vet this um, proposal. I received official notification in the mail from Buncombe County Planning Department on January 28th. It was mailed, postmarked. January 27th. If we cannot convince you today to deny the zero setback request, which would make a high density housing project, then at least grant us continuance. The developer has had months to plan and develop his proposal. We should be entitled to the same amount of time. Thank you for hearing me out and for ruling on this matter today. I deeply respect each and every one of you as a public service provider and the sacrifices that you and your families make for you to be on this board, and I really appreciate that. I appreciate and respect your open-mindedness in listening to us, we the people that will be living in this environment and around this proposed area and who enjoy the mountains and the trees that are there now. The Blue Ridge Mountains have stood for 1.2 billion years. This mountain is, our mountains are softer than Colorado because they've been worn down and smooth, but Frady Mountain is still standing and I'm here to say I'd like it to stay natural. With an open heart and the love for the beauty and peace I feel and you feel for Asheville, I humbly ask you to reject this developer's request. Thank you. <clears throat> Can I ask a legal question? Yes. Well, I, I believe what the lady is kind of where she's going was she wants time and uh, they, uh, for an attorney to assist her and them. Uh, we went through this but previously. Uh, how, 
how is that how does that go into this flow i mean how would that how could that occur and is it proper and is it what more is needed for her to to seek a continuance or something like that if you're seeking a continuance you have to have standing is my understanding first um and she i would be happy to hear from her as to <coughs> the the elements of the statute and, and requirements for standing that Mr. Freeman presented, but my understanding is you can't make such a motion unless you, in fact, have standing. Otherwise, it's kind yeah, of a I, public I, comment phase. Right. I remember that. that. That was key to the whole thing, was de de uh, uh, determining whether or not you had standing. If you had standing, then you could put in a request uh, and qu inquiry or whatever it is to, to obtain a, a continuance. That's correct. So I, I believe the most appropriate thing to do at this point, absent an objection or advice from counsel, would be to ask Miss. Could you state your last name again for me? My legal last name is Ferris. F E R R I S S. Miss Ferris, would you mind telling us where you live? One one three Galloway Drive, Asheville two eight eight zero three. Could you tell uh, tell us where that is in proximity to the relevant area yes I can, on that map if you don't mind if it's on there if not then descriptions fine I live right across overlook from about equal where Delchester is Delchester is a very time there you go right in there see where the G of Galloway is I'm right there under that G so I can sit at my dining room table and breakfast table and I look out and I brought a photo today but I cannot submit it because it's on a computer but I can see all the the entire mountain with this winter view I see the treetops and it's a woods I believe the Next most salient inquiry would be the element of special damages. That's the one we spent the most time on in previous hearings. Is that? That's correct. That's correct. Um, so I cannot allege for you special damages. Special damages are something that we require before we could make a determination as to standing for you. Um, do you have anything that you'd like to say as to special damages? Would you define special damages, what that means? I'd have to defer to counsel on whether or not I could do that. I think that this is a conversation that would best be had with, the, with an attorney who was representing you and could apply your facts. I'm happy to give uh, a, a summary of, of what may constitute special damages. I offer no warranty as to this for any members of the public who are listening. This is something that is a complex area of law. This definition is derived from reading uh, many court of appeals and Supreme Court cases in North Carolina as well as the general statutes. Is a very general note to constitute special jam damages damages must be distinct from those damages to the public at large proximity in and of itself is insufficient to grant standing it does bear some weight on the issue property value is a factor in standing but not determinative and may not be enough on its own additional adverse impacts i.e some secondary impacts need to be shown by the party alleging standing the essential element is a credible allegation of harm to use and enjoy the, uh, a particular piece of property. Brandon, uh, in, in a previous meeting that we had, uh, standing was established for the people that were on the, uh, the other side of the road from the development, but that, that was, it was basically, was it, pri was it their primary or uh, Second, not second, a very primary. It was the only way. It was the, basically their only way. They had to, it affected them from, and they weren't on the main road, they were on a uh, road right across from it, and it was like maybe 150 yards or something from where that I, I'm hesitant to. Had. I'm hesitant to bring in any case that has been before the board before. Uh, however, I will note that generally in cases before this board before and cases in the future, we have to follow North well, Carolina Well, my law. only point was that it, it was not contiguous. In other words, it, the, the standing was clear for the properties that were contiguous, but not, it was a determination was made that the property that was some, it was very close, but 
And, and I think that what, what the courts have held is that proximity, so closeness, whether you're right next to it or uh, pretty close to it, just proximity in general, uh, the law I don't think makes a distinction other than proximity, is that it is, uh, it, it's, in and of itself, it's not sufficient. There still needs to be uh, uh, additional adverse okay. impacts shown. I see. Would people that are, if someone was on right on Overlook Road, would that perhaps have a better footing for standing without being a pun? I hate to dodge this and sound like a lawyer and, and uh, you know, add to the, the, the number of jokes that will be written about us in the future, uh, but I, I really am hesitant to answer a hypothetical. Well, I think the fact that I received this notice means that I was within a certain radius of the site. So a lot of people did not receive this, but I did. Well, there's another thing, too, is that it's the same logic. This lady is presenting the same logic that the other group did on the, on the large project, and they were incredibly organized. These people aren't, I, I, but they were making the same point. I will say a lot of this is kind of peremptory for us. Mr. Allen, do you, are you officially lodging an objection to her attempts to assert standing? Because this, this might be fairly easy to dispose of if you're not objecting. I don't think she has standing, um, but also don't think that a, a, an objection, I mean, a continuance is warranted in this, and so maybe maybe that's the, the thing here, and I'll tell you why. Um, well, we don't, want, we don't even want to touch the issue of continuance, because okay. procedurally, we, that just is a minefield for sure. us until standing is proven. But no, I, I don't think she has uh, standing at all. Um, it's not adjacent. I know that proximity is, is really the, the thing that we look at, and that only carries minimal impact. Um, there's been no allegations regarding uh, special damages, um, not under any case that I've read. Um, the issues that we have heard about are uh, traffic congestion and uh, conservation type issues and school type issues. All of those are public at large issues if you take them uh, a, as true on their face, which again, we don't. But um, if you take them as true on their face, they're still public at large damages, not special damages. So I think there's been no showing of standing at all. Are there any specific things that would affect you from this? That's what, that's the core of my. Yes, I bought this, this house with my daughter and my husband four months ago. And we did not know that this was proposed. And the value of my home will probably be, I'm not a real estate Objection. agent. He didn't, I mean, he's going to object. But Objection. Having a high density apartment complex across the street is probably not going to increase or keep my property value the same, but I don't know for sure. Okay. So the hard part about this, and I'll, I'll share this with you guys, this is the only way in which I do want to rehash the previous hearings, is that special damages need only be alleged, not proven. So it's difficult to offer an objection as to someone alleging something un unless there's a specific basis for why she could not allege something that would be special damages. She doesn't have to prove it, is my understanding, at this stage. I think we spent about two hours on that question alone in the last hearing. That does not mean that we're here yet, but I, I don't know that we could override her at least alleging that presently. I would, I would add to that that um, while property value is a factor in, in standing, it is also not determined to and uh, may not be enough on its own, that there still needs to be those additional adverse impacts. Uh, I think the showing issue could get more complicated. Uh, showings, I think, you know, can be made, you know, by an expert saying, making maybe a prima facie case. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know that, that I have a clear answer on that. Mr. Freeman said what I was gonna say about valuation. Can you say that one more time? Yes, Mr. Freeman said what I was going to say about, about valuation. Okay. Well, um, oh. yes, ma'am. I'd like to say, as a personal expert in living there, I'm a resident that lives there. So that's my point of view. That's my perspective. I'm going to see this every day. I'm not going to be just driving past it, I will have to drive past it also. 
and the amount of noise and disturbance that's going to be caused to me and to my family and to my community with one and a half years, which is a proposed amount of construction time, to deforest and grade this land to build on it and building on it will decrease the quality of my life and my habitat that I own. And I live on one acre that was developed by L.B. Jackson. And he developed Blake Mountain. And it's very beautiful with single family homes. And the homes are valued, each of them is over $500,000 and up. And um, I didn't um, expect this. I object to all of that for lack of qualifications. I was previously sworn in. Can I speak again? I just if you can bear with, with me one second. Sure. Don't mind. I have a, a legal question for our county attorney. I, I, I don't know, is, is doing this in public the, the most transparent, clear way of, of getting a, a legal research question answered? And just so, so everyone understands, this is not a concept that's lost on us. I'm, I do this for a living, and I'm still in active discussions with the School of Government about what these terms mean. So this is not something that's cut and dry or, or clear here. I want to make sure we get it right. And we had, I think, three hearings at this point on just this issue. Um, I don't, I, I think because we're dealing in a kind of vague area of law here with respect to special damages, there, I could not find a single case that last time we did this that clearly defined exactly what special damages are, but we have a lot of what it's not. Is that a fair description of where we landed last session? <laughs> I think that it's fair to say that the, th this is an issue that the courts have wrestled with for a while and will probably continue wrestling with. I'm not sure that there is ever going to be a definitive list for us to look at and see what special damages are. Uh, I think that that's one reason why this board functions as a quasi-judicial body. At some point, a judge has to make a judgment call, and essentially this board sits, sits as a judge in a courtroom and, and has to make that call. We can use what decisions have been rendered from the Court of Appeals and our Supreme Court in, in making that decision. And, and I agree with you that we, we, we hear what is and what is not special damages much more in the form of what it's not. Uh, and uh, we, we've got to use that as much as we can. For, for the, the, the situation at Bar. I think we have to look very closely at what has been shown to the board uh, and go just on that, rather than getting into a hypothetical of uh, if one event was proven, would that be a, a special damages? Uh, you know, the, the one thing that I've heard that would be, that could be a special damage at least part way there is, is is an allegation of adverse impacts on property values or impact on property values. Uh, even that would require more, and I'm not sure that the board has has heard that. Uh, that's a decision for the board to make, um, but the board may want to look at that as a threshold matter as before going back and determining was there a showing of property values uh, or would such a showing require at least some evidence from an expert in the field so so showings I, I don't think that a showing has to be an expert uh, uh, cross-examined and a definitive answer uh, made as to whether there will be an impact on property damages I think that uh, potentially that could be done by an expert making a showing of that. But I do think it has to be someone who is competent to inform the board of those uh, property value concerns. Um, but Brandon, was it not the flow, the procedural flow was that we've heard the case being made that they had standing, however it was, that came to this board uh, for a vote of whether they had standing. 
So I think that, again, that, that's talking about a, a past case, and I, and I don't want to bring past cases in here, but cases come to this board in all shapes and sizes and in all order. That was a case where uh, standing was an issue and everyone knew it was an issue at the outset. I think standing can also become an issue uh, at, a, at, a, at, at a later date well, or there, at a later there, point. There, I mean, we were inquiring if they had standing, wouldn't it be appropriate that the board, that at one point, somewhere in this discussion, the question would come back to this board to vote to determine whether or not, whether or not they have standing? Wouldn't it be the board's responsibility to determine that standing? And I think that's the conversation that is that's right. happening right now. I think that that's that's. I mean, there's no other about. person or entity that can do that. Perhaps the county attorney might be able to. Oh, oh no, absolutely not. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I yeah. think that so everyone's clear on uh, on how I'm approaching this. The questions I'm asking are solely to determine whether or not there's a legal basis on which we can find that that she or any party has standing, and I'm, I'm doing that. In, in the open as best I can in plain language as opposed to using law so everybody can kind of see how the sausage is being made here. Um, it's not pretty, it's not fun, and, and we are going to have to vote on it, but I don't think that we'd be doing ourselves a service if we voted on it without knowing what, whether special, or dam special damages have been shown in a legal sense. And if we don't have any legal guidance on that, then fine, it's our decision, discretion call to make it. We can do that, but I don't, I'm not eager to override something that the Court of Appeals has said because we would be breaking our duty and, and sworn oath to, to follow the law by ignoring legal precedent there. If there's not any, then fine, everyone vote as you see fit. But as best I can tell, I'm, uh, the, guy, the questions that we're asking is to determine whether or not there's been a sufficient showing, and that's the part that I'm wrestling with. But if someone is having less difficulty with it than, than myself, please chime in. This is not a one-person show by any means. I do have a procedural question, and I'm an attorney and I'm following this saying, I'm not exactly sure of the answer. Have you found that anybody speaking today has standing? Does anyone have standing here? I can't make that determination without a healthy number of increases you're probably seeing. Um, the reason I'm asking her uh, these, this many questions is because that's exactly what we're trying to get to the root of. Uh, as to whether or not other parties have standing, that's almost kind of like an advisory opinion at this point based on what little I, I've heard from them. I understand that, but my presentation of what, where I was coming from in terms of standing, did you make a decision on that? I oh. believe we can look at the record, but I believe the decision was that uh, your seeking of standing was abandoned. Abandoned and I, and I by which part? Abandoned by which party? That, that would have been, uh, I, b I believe that you've, halfway through the inquiry said I'm just going to give this as testimony. That's because we were so confused on the standing issue so I didn't know how to proceed. So I mean so the question keeps coming back to do any of us have standing? So I, th I think I've got two concerns. The first concern is that we're looking at another issue and I think that this is broadening the scope and bringing up Or narrowing it. My, my, I don't think so. My second issue is that you appear to be acting as a behalf on other people who may have testified before, and I'm not sure that, that, that you're allowed to represent them. My only question is, as a resident of Blake Mountain Estates, who lives actually closer to the development than she does, who also got the notice dated January 27th for a meeting on the 12th of February, who's also a, an officer of our HOA, do I have standing or don't I? So I think that your standing issue has already been addressed by the board, and I, I believe it's closed. It would be up to the board to, to reopen that. And so at the moment, no, I do not believe you have standing. Uh, the board is, is currently considering another standing question, and I, and I think I don't want to uh, speak out of term, but I think that it would be better if the board was able to talk to uh, the, the current witness then what I would ask is if you find that she does not have standing, I'd like to have a chance then to make a standing argument again. And I'm not going to be one to deprive the public from speaking. That's something that I think we have good legal guidance we, c we cannot do. Or we'll reconsider that for you because we technically never reached a final judgment call there beyond the interpretation that you had abandoned it, but not so much so that we won't let you make the argument if you choose to do that. 
what I'm going to say just going forward is that I cannot, should not, and I probably imagine I will receive an objection from counsel if I do try to coach someone through any part of this. That is not our role as essentially judges. That being said, I will hear from you. I think we put the standard out there as clear as we can make it without being attorneys for either side. It is a contested topic. It's not cut and dry. I will hear arguments from both sides on it, and I think that's about the best that we can do here in terms of making a fact-based determination um, on each individual person's case. I'm happy to hear from you. I'm happy to hear from any other party who wants to assert standing, but I think we've, we've kind of expelled the, the amount of legal guidance that we can offer without getting into an inappropriate role. Um, is that fair? All parties understand where I'm coming from on that? I, I would I would like to address her and get hers done first because she's currently the witness that well, that we're. I want to ask one question about your statement that the, the, you feel that the quasi-judicial agency cannot help people presenting their cases. Typically, when people are appearing pro bono or appearing by themselves without attorney representation, courts bend over backwards to be helpful to them. <laughs> For the public's edification, we have engaged in a discussion and counseling on what the standards are in a way that ri runs right up to the line of what we ethically are allowed to do within the state of North Carolina under practice of the law. I can't give you a more clear standard or guidance on the law than counsel for the board has already done. However, the inquiries that I've asked you up to this point leaves you with only one real question that I'm considering, which is the special damages one. And that's the only part that I want to have an answer to as to my inquiries. The rest of the board can ask you whatever they want. Martin, can I ask one quick question? Sure. I, just because I, I'm, now my head's kind of getting full. Um, the reason that we are trying to, the reason that this whole standing came about rather than some other people that we had before is because, if I understand it correctly, she was asking for a continuance. Is that the, uh, that's the reason that we didn't have this same issue with other people before. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. That is why it's, we're, we need to address these on an individual basis for each person, okay. given their specific circumstances. Thank you. So I'll hear from you, ma'am. Well, since I'm not a real estate expert, I can't make a determination because this project has not been built. So I cannot make any proof that my property values will be decreased. It's completely... Um, common sense that if you have one acre lots with beautiful old trees across from a high density apartment complex. Objection to high density. It, the continue use of high density in an area that allows 12 units per acre when we're proposing three units per acre just doesn't make sense. I'll reserve judgment on that until after I hear the entirety of her sentence. So high density compared to the one acre lot that I live on where the property lots are single family homes owned by individual owners on lots that are probably one half acre to one acre and more. <clears throat> so I cannot prove damages because that would be in the future and I don't have any evidence to show on that. As far as not having legal representation, I would like to have the opportunity to have legal representation if that's what I need to be a qualified person to stand up and say my opinion. But I do live right across the street and that is my only unique perspective. I will be living and looking at this and hearing it for the one and a half years that it will take to do and then live with it for the rest of my life after that or else I can choose to move. Thank you. Thank you. Do any board members have any questions solely with respect to the issue of standing for this witness in particular? So, so what is our procedure? Our procedure at this point would be, if we don't have any more questions, to make a determination and vote as to whether or not she has standing. Okay. And then we could take a break at 1230? Uh, <laughs> well, because we've been in here about an hour and various people need to break. <laughs> Chair, can I, can I cross just on one item? Yes. 
briefly. On please. standing? Sure. Um, Ms. Ferris, you said that you live right across the street from the proposed development. Uh, is it more accurate to say that you are one, two, three properties in on, looks like a couple of dead end roads? If you look at the map that's on the screen, I am they don't have pin numbers and well, lot numbers so I can't give a determination. Do you, do you live beside uh, the vaults? Yes, I live above the vaults. Okay, so they're they are my neighbor. They're on the corner then across the street from them. They're not on a corner. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. On a across corner. the street from them. I'm, I'm looking at the GIS map just to give you some some reference. I'm not making it up. Um, and right across the street from them, uh, in between them and, and the proposed property, or Lo Overlook Road, rather, would be the Furlongs and the Garwoods. I've only lived here four months. I don't know all my neighbors' names. But they have some, they have a, uh, uh, across the street, they have uh, a row of houses in between them and Overlook, correct? I don't know which street you're talking about across the street. Galloway. I don't, what is your question? You live beside the vaults, correct? I live above the vaults in a higher elevation. I, I look down on the vaults roof. Uh, okay, but your property line would be adjacent to theirs, correct? Yes. And they, they across the street from them in any direction are houses in between them and Overlook, correct? Yes. And then the property is on the other side of Overlook that's proposed to be developed, correct? Yes, and Ms. Nab is the one that lives right on Overlook. Okay, no further questions. Thank you. Would anybody benefit from doing the recess before we vote to take a minute to think about it, or would you like to resolve this issue prior to us taking a brief let's recess? Let's vote on standing. Yeah. Let's vote on, let's get the standing out of the way. Quickly. So we literally have yeah. half the board deciding one thing, and <laughs> the other half deciding the other. Um, yeah, let's okay. Let's have a standing vote. I'll entertain it for motion from someone if they're I'll prepared a to. to vote on this lady's standing. In favor or against? Um, um, I, I vote against. Okay. All right. We have a motion um, well, are you to vote on. To have the I, I'm voting to have the motion. And yes. I, I move that uh, she does not have standing. Second. We have a motion and a second to vote on standing. Um, all in favor of a finding of standing, say aye. 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 All opposed? We're, so we're voting solely as to whether or not um, she has standing. Oh, okay. I thought you said we're, whether or not we we're going to vote on standing is what I oh. said. I'm sorry. Could you just no, say uh, it yeah. again? Can we just make it clear? Are you, is, is, to clarify, my understanding is the motion is to vote on standing. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And there's a second. The motion for the is that she does not have standing. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I think I might be able to clear this up. Please. Mr. Lichen made a motion to have a vote. That motion died for lack of a second. Mr. Chris made a motion that she that the uh, current witness does not have standing. That motion was seconded by Ms. Cordell. Uh, that motion is now uh, ready to have a vote by the board. Okay, but the, to be clear, an affirmative vote in favor of that motion means that she does not have standing. That's correct. correct. Okay, that, that's the motion. All in favor of the motion that was seconded to find that she does not have standing, say aye. 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 Any opposed? At this time, it, it is such that you, the board does not find that you have standing um, due to the statutory requirements, is my understanding. Um, this does not preclude other parties from addressing this. I think we would benefit from a recess unless someone has a strong objection at this point. How many more people to speak? How many more people wish to speak, just so we have an idea? So we have a healthy amount. How long a break would you? 20 minutes. Let's take a 20 minute recess, hard 20 minutes. We will be back at 1250.